But after his 40 page manifesto, and after his dragging me, my fiance, and a few of my friends through the mud, decided that I do care. So I have decided to put together a little compendium of all the things that I know to be true over the past few months. And I present that work to you today in full. I've spent probably the better part of the last 36 hours working on this. And we're just gonna run through everything and we'll see how it goes. Before we start, <clears throat> a couple people have tried to make it clear. A couple people have tried to say that they don't want certain things being made public, that they don't want blah, 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 blah. Um, I noticed that Ophelia had tweeted out earlier, she didn't want something that she said to be displayed or something. I noticed that she did that while linking to a clip that Bob Seven himself had made. So it sounds like there's a little bit of games being played behind the scenes. It sounds like Bob Seven is very invested. Parts of the story are not coming out. Unfortunately, my reputation is at stake here, as is the reputation of my fiance and a few other people. And I believe that the only reason Ophelia is posting what she is is because of things that Bob Seven has said to her. And there have already been incredibly damaging personal aspects of my life and other people's lives that have been shared, some explicitly without their consent, while they have tweeted and begged him not to. So those complaints are falling on deaf ears tonight. I'm sorry that bothers you. I don't wish to bring anybody any more harassment than they've already received, but you have to understand that at this point, I'm kind of being pushed into playing my entire hand. There will be no vague allegations today. There will be no mentions of nukes, only mushroom clouds. I'm going to begin reading Believe it or not, I actually read through the entire 39-page manifesto that Bob wrote. I'm not gonna lie, it was very boring. It was not very compelling. It was not very entertaining to read. I tried to keep this pretty short, pretty concise, pretty sweet. I think this clocks in at about 17 pages, but this is like a double-spaced 17 pages. So, not too much here. Is it enough? Well, only one way to find out. <clears throat> Zoom in for the phone packs. Um, do I need to zoom more? Nah, you can watch the video later. I'm not going to ruin my presentation. This is the table of contents, of the things we will be going through. I've used the ISO date format for clarity. Timelines aren't ultra important. Just in case, here they are. Our preface, why are we still here just to suffer? At the end of 2020, I committed to ensuring that I set the record straight on any large dramatic incidents involving me, regardless of how likely I was to sway public opinion. I believe there has been a deliberate manipulation of the record by certain people, namely Bob Seven, and I am not comfortable leaving things as they are. Here I present in full a document not only cataloging and justifying my initial claims, but also disproving many of the claims laid out by Bob Seven in previous videos and documents. To justify the claims I am making, I will be including logs and audio recordings from a wide variety of sources. I retain all of the original sources for all of the material I am about to present, and I am able to provide more in later updates if necessary. I do not believe I will need to speak to any of these matters once this document has been published and reviewed. In this document, I will prove the following. Bob Seven used his position on The Austin Show to sexually harass talent, leading to his removal, getting fired. Bob Seven shared nude photographs of multiple women after pressuring one to post one without their consent. And Bob Seven, with the help of Casey Tron and Minx, I'm gonna try really hard to rope both of them in here because fuck both of those pieces of shit, manipulated a victim of Bob Seven's abuse to lie and change her story for Bob Seven's benefit. That's what we're gonna be talking about the later parts of this document. <clears throat> I ask you all to bear with me. I am gonna be completely honest with you. I Pokemon myself. Sometimes we give advice, we don't always follow it. I remember when Pokemon tried to make her initial claims, uh, refuting Fedmeister's claims, I specifically told Pokemon and I made fun of her for it. I said, why would you ever try to counteract somebody that would have taken so much time to notate every little thing and think you could do that on the fly 
What a stupid thing. Well, me and all of my infinite arrogance thought that I could do the same. I get somebody like Bob Seven, who's very good at talking, which I will give him credit for. It's probably one of the uh, mm, one of the more manipulative people that I've ever like ran into before. So, also following Pokemon and my advice to her, as I said to her, make a second document, notate everything, leave no stone unturned, leave no truth doubted. So here I have prepared a full timeline to initially establish everything that I went over in my first video. Now, bear with me on this first ride. This is gonna be a lot of old ground that we cover initially, although I will work a lot harder to substantiate all of my initial claims. Once we've established the initial timeline, I'm going to move into what I believe were the chief sins committed by Bob Seven during this ordeal. After I've covered the timeline and the sins that I believe that Bob Seven has committed, I'm going to go over the supporting cast of colorful characters that he's collected to try to corroborate his bullshit stories, and then we'll end with a summary. So that's what we're doing right now. We're going to go over the timeline. <clears throat> um, as an aside, I thought about whether or not I would release this entire thing before the stream or after the stream. Um, right now, I'm kind of sitting on, I'll make it public once I've gotten to the end because I don't want people to get it, click ahead, read stuff, blah, 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 blah. I'd like to be able to present the whole thing from start to finish. So. The Timeline. Establishing order in a world of chaos. A friendship born on April 9th, 2020, Bob Seven tweeted out a joke about doing adult content. Melina responded in a DM to this, and shortly after, the two began com uh, communicating regularly. I'm not gonna click every single link. I'll leave that to you guys later on. Um, if I think they're, well, actually, you know what? I think I will, just so that, just so that we're all on the same page. Um, <clears throat> this was like the original tweet that he tweeted out. Um, Sorry, ladies, I'm not doing adult content. I went blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> And then Melina responded to him in a DM, I want sexy pics. And then Bob responded back. This is how their friendship started. Um, to be clear, Bob Seven is not naked in this picture. I just included his response to show that it wasn't someone's side response. He's fully clothed, but I didn't want to release a full picture of him. So there you go. That looks a lot more, uh, it looks a lot more risque than it actually was. And shortly after, the two began communicating regularly. Their communication over the next several months from April to November would continue without incident. Melina confided in Bob Seven regarding all sorts of matters in her life, whether it was the consensual sharing of nudes, wait, why is this so hard? Oh, fuck, hold on. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm just gonna read this so that we understand that everything is consensual here. I feel happier at least, what should be my inspiration? Are you asking me to talk dirty to you without being straightforward with it again? Nah, I'm okay. A picture would be cool. Really? What do you like? Well, I remember when I asked you over and over if you wanted nudes, you never gave me a straight answer, uh, a straight response to it. So now that you're asking, it feels kind of fun or it feels crazy fun. It's up to you, a single photo um, you think I'd like. Um, after showing some photos, I guess I can't object to more after seeing this. What does that mean? You look good. Well, thanks. Do you want more? Yes. Okay, now I sleep. Thanks for the help. Did you come? Yeah, of course. You don't have to send me anything if you don't want to. Some people feel bad about that. Which one did you like the most? First and second to last, all were useful. Are you more convinced about the benefits now? Nah, you took advantage of sleep deprived Bob. Gonna report you to the police. I was meant to be a beacon of unhorniness. You stole my time and Twitch money. Okay, that's a fair deal. As part of me going through these logs, I want to establish some patterns of communication that I think are incredibly important. Um, <clears throat> the first one here is that Bob Seven is very jokey with how he communicates. So he'll like joke about everything, which gives him a lot of plausible deniability in later conversations. And he also sells himself as being like asexual or non-sexual, which is also something that will become very relevant later on. Um, but, um, and then in another occasion, it's crazy how I can get off so many times in such a short time. I've had three orgasms since my last message, LOL. What the fuck, can you do that? I'd be happy to start with one blast. Send me something, I trust your judgment. Really? Okay, hmm, for right now, we're in the past, right now. Okay, so we've established that. Getting advice about relationship issues. So here are a couple conversations. Dang, you actually listened to what I said and you brought it up, that's so cool. I think this is after an argument me and Melina had. Yeah, of course I did. Did you try to clarify? I don't want it to be the case I'm scared to talk to the girls you're boning because that's what it boils down to. Yeah, I did. And that's the reason why I want to talk about it. Holy fuck, and then this is about a conversation that me and Melina are having while I'm streaming. Holy fuck, you guys having this conversation right now while he's streaming? LOL, he's a machine. Yeah, he can do a lot. Fuck, I don't know what to do sometimes, I have no solutions. I mean, how would you feel if it was something and you guys didn't talk about? I would be too sad. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, blah, blah, blah. So just establishing they do this. 
Um, duo streams together. So I've linked here like three different streams they've done together. I don't think anybody is going to contest these things. I'm just trying to document everything. Um, planning activities for stream. We should do Twitch Sings. Oh God, oh yes, Twitch Sings, Bob. I'm scared, will it be fun? Bob, I have a great idea. Do you wanna help me with it? What is it? Okay, this is so funny. I'm gonna start cosplaying streamers and make a whole Austin show with all the characters and have like storylines. Do you wanna help out with ideas? Blah, 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 like a different days or video. So this is just them talking about like stream ideas <clears throat> or just having long calls in general about a variety of things. Um, and again, all I'm trying to do here is establish um, because I've heard Bob Simmons say different things about whether he does did like her or didn't like her. I just want to get everything ultra crystal clear that Bob Seven and uh, Melina talked a lot, okay? This is a two-hour call, two-hour call, hour call, two-hour call, four-hour call, uh, two-hour call, four-hour call, four-hour call. Uh, there's like a lot of conversations that go on here, okay? They weren't just like fair weather friends. They weren't people that just like randomly chatted. Um, at one point, Melina considered Bob Seven her closest friend. Um, this is like somebody that was very, very, very important to her. <clears throat> Melina considered Bob Seven her closest friend, and it seemed as though he felt somewhat similar. So like he's made references to like, oh, I hope that, um, I hope I can make you happy when we meet, when they're like talking about each other, blah, 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 saying they love each other, all that. So we have, all of this is established, okay? They're very close friends, all right? Do you love black people? After appearing on several scuffed podcasts together, Bose and I chatted on and off through the early and middle of 2020. We finally agreed to meet Grab a Bite to Eat on the 22nd of September. Over the next month and a half, we would hang out quite frequently, sometimes daily, sometimes every other day, and begin to establish a very close friendship. The inciting incident. On November 6th, 2020, Bob Seven and Big Boss Bose had a live stream together, lasts about two hours and 13 minutes. At one point in the live stream, Bob Seven alludes to knowing something that would shock Bose. So in the middle of this, he brings up something along the lines of like, oh, I bet I know something that would shock you. And then he types to her, okay, so obviously I'm friends with Melina, so I just don't know what you know that I know. She says, whew, I don't know what you know. You know, there's always, okay, okay, we'll talk later. <clears throat> Though Bob Seven would immediately deny that he remembered bringing it up the next day to Melina as she talks to me about the call that they had. So Melina had a call with him, and during that call, um, Melina said, um, or she types to me, it seems like she said something during the stream that he thought was a hint, like, does she know that I know? And he types something to her to kind of get a picture if she does, and then they decided to talk about it off stream. I don't know who started first, and he doesn't remember. But it seems like she had already had a picture of me hating her, and he tried to tell her that I didn't, and that I only have traumatic experiences with girls, and that's why I have certain boundaries. So he thought this conversation went well, so he's shocked. Um, this is also establishing another incredibly important pattern. This is something that Bob Seven does frequently. So sometimes he will allude to something to pique somebody's interest so that they ask more about it. And sometimes he'll kind of dance around something so that you know what he talks about, but he'll be able to say like later on, whoa, I didn't bring that up. These are all not important right now, but they will become incredibly important later. At one point in the live stream, Bob Seven alludes to knowing something that would shock Bose, though Bob Seven would immediately deny, um, would immediately deny that he remembered bringing it up the next day to Melina. She talks to me about the call they had. And after the stream, they continue to talk for approximately five more hours. In this conversation, Bob Seven would then proceed to divulge an unbelievable amount of incredibly personal stories and personal information related to my relationship with Melina to Bose. I zoom in, font too small. Is it really, guys? I can zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> Again, this initial timeline is basically covering everything that I said in my original video. I just wanted to document things very closely before we hop into the, uh, the meat of everything, okay? That night, Bose is sending me messages while they're talking. A few surprising claims are made, one being that Melina was pissed that Bob was doing the stream with Bose today. Oh, Bob is the best. He's been wingmanning hard. Apparently she was pissed he was doing the stream with me today, and she said she wasn't going to tune in. Which is surprising, given that Melina neither said anything negative about them streaming together and seemed supportive after he brought it up, and even after he mentions their six-hour talk. And then here are logs. So I've gone through Melina's logs, and I've gone through what Bose has said to me to try to get a picture of what's going on on both sides. This is Melina talking to Bob before the stream. I know, I'm going to sleep. Do you really want me to tune in? Nah, it's fine. 
Heart, have fun. Thank you for being a good friend always. I hope that I will always be a good friend. God, about to have a conversation with those off stream. My goal going into the post stream conversation is don't create drama. I will succeed. I believe in myself. I will make the situation better, if anything. I have faith in, and then this is after the talk. I have faith in Bose as a human. I was happy to see you tune in. Appreciate having you as a friend, Melina. How did it go? Good. I'm drunk, I think. Ha ha ha. Did you have fun? Yeah. Talking was great. Yay. Um, even after he said that they had a six hour talk, we talked a bunch off stream, talked for six hours or something, got to hear her thoughts about a ton. She said that she could hook me up if I wanted to try stand up. That's really good. That would be so cool. So these are Melina's responses to him after she finds out that they've done a big stream, which is strange given what Bose told me. Bose goes on further to say that she's upset that Melina hates her, despite Melina never saying as much. Um, Rita's convos with her later, I guess. Bob is super on my team, which is good, but like, I feel bad that she like hates me so much. I don't think she hates you. I think she's just super, super jealous about being so far away from me. Have they had Discord voice calls you missed or something? Yeah, I mean, I can't listen to their voice chats, of course. She tells him everything. Yeah, I know. She was really upset with him, too, that I was going to be on a show today, and they had a long-ass conversation about it. <clears throat> One common pattern of behavior that is established here is Bob Seven giving two different versions of a story to two different people in order to influence how they view each other. Bose begins to doubt our friendship and wants to pull back after her conversation with Bob Seven, leaving me feeling frustrated but understanding of the situation that she's been placed in. <clears throat> Dude, I feel like I'm processing everything from the convo. I'm like, Steven, this is so much, LOL. I didn't sign up for this from Bob Seven or me. Oh yeah, I don't know what this face is, but that face. Everything, I mean, I'm kind of drunk and maybe being reactive. Not sure how I react to info like this when I'm drinking, but I feel super confused and weird, like not fun and good anymore. I still want to see you tomorrow and I'll sleep on it, but big fucking yikes. Yeah, I understand. Sorry everything is so horrible and complicated. Yeah, it's a lot, dude. How do you feel? I feel like I should be asking you that more. I think it's really important to keep yourself and your feelings protected slash respected. Well, that's about me, not about you. How do you feel? I don't know. I just get really worried I'm being selfish or I'm being too selfish sometimes. Sure, I get that. What would your selfishness entail? What do you want that you feel like is too selfish? Don't shut down, Stephen. You've got this. I believe in you and your big wrinkly brain. I'm so smooth right now. Um, a pattern that I would like to establish here is Bob Seven always tries to make me out to be this manipulative person. To be honest, I'm pretty free with every, what everybody does. I actually worry that I put too much stress on people quite a bit. Somebody feels like they want to pull back. I can respect that. That's fine. I'm not going to force anybody to do anything they don't want to, even if I feel like there's some piece of shit behind the scene feeding them lies. Um, I, think I've, I think I demonstrate that as much. I should probably say this tomorrow when I sober up, but it's fine. This all feels really ridiculous to me. Your life isn't crazy or stressful to me. I love getting curveballs thrown and rolling with the punches, but I think I've finally crossed a boundary you expressed to me really early. And I don't think I respect your relationship anymore. I truly, truly 1 million percent did before, and I think that made it easier to go with the flow, which violates a boundary you have with your significant other. I still wanna hang out tomorrow, but like, I'm not getting tangled up in this shit. Yeah, I understand. The boundary that she's referring to is that if I'm ever seeing or talking to another girl, I, I will never, ever, ever shit talk my significant other, and I don't want them shit talking my significant other. I don't ever want to like hang out with somebody and have them, um, and have them like feel like they're going to be shitting on my partner or like thinking poorly of my partner. It's just, it's a really big thing I have. An investigation. Between November 6th and 7th, I set to work figuring, oh wait, hold on, sorry. So after she sends me this mess these messages, the night comes to a close and I begin to contemplate what has taken place. You have to consider from my point of view, again, none of this is juicy drama, it's boring social stuff. I understand, we're getting there, okay? You have to understand from my point of view, I made a very close friend, gotten very close to somebody, and in a single conversation, this person is now telling me that they need to pull back from me. It was a little upsetting to me, but the night comes to a close and I begin to contemplate what has taken place. An investigation. Between November 6th and 7th, I set to work figuring out exactly what had happened the previous night. I began to ask Melina and Bose some questions about why Bob Seven had overshared so much in the conversation with Bose and what he'd said to make her dislike Melina so much. I was receiving conflicting information from all of the parties involved, with Melina ensuring me that Bob Seven didn't say anything negative about our relationship and felt the conversation went positively. Bose the previous night, previous night telling me that Melina already didn't like her and didn't want Bob Seven streaming with her, and Bob Seven telling Melina that he felt the conversation had gone really well. So here are our points of disagreement. But it seems like she had already had a picture of me hating her and he tried to tell her um, I didn't and that I only have traumatic experiences with girls and that I have certain boundaries. He thought the conversation went well, so he's shocked. He said this before too, um, before I knew that she was upset, like before we talked, so he thought things went well, like he thought he fixed things. Now he says he might've brought up 
Now he says he might have brought up, apparently she asked him if I hated her, so it seems like she already had that impression and he tried to make sure that wasn't the case. And then I said, please just don't turn this into a huge negative conversation. And she said, and Bob didn't have the impression of me hating her at all. So again, playing a little bit loose with like, who brought up what first, blah, 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 blah. All of this right now is just irrelevant personal garbage, but these conversation patterns become crucial to understanding stuff going on later in the document. Bo saying me, to me, Bob Seven's been wingmanning hard. Apparently she was pissed that he was doing the stream with me today and said she wasn't gonna tune in. I mean, there's a lot, but like, I'm like question mark, question mark. Steven, did I not tell you like week one, people's girlfriends don't like me? LOL, I said Bob's usually really chill. Like I said, Bob's usually really chill. Okay, well guess who isn't chilling? Melina. I have no problems with Bob. I have not communicated anything negative to Bose about Bob. I say that he's chill. I don't have any problems with him, but. And then finally, these are the messages that I read between Bob and Melina. Yeah, I just want to talk to Steven first. Hope that goes well. Briefly talk to Bose. How did it go? Did she tell you what you told her? Good. She said, she just said the things I said last night. She has a good impression of you. Can you tell me what um, she said? Like pretty exactly? Uh, we spoke for like 30 minutes. What she said in relation to what? Like anything. What was those 30 minutes about? 10 to 15 minutes about clarity with the situation. Then the rest about other shit. Yeah. Can you clarify for me? I was worried I gave her a negative impression or something, but that didn't seem to be the case at all. I don't know if this was useful, haha. Why did it seem like that wasn't the case? Why do you think Steven got such a different impression? Again, boring social stuff, but this is such an important pattern of conversation that will become incredibly important later on. Um, if you're familiar with the Iman uh, Denims, well, with the Denims and Atlas drama, um, the only reason I was able to figure out what fucky stuff was going on there was also because Denim told, told the same story three different ways to three different people or told three different versions of the same story to three different people. When somebody starts, when there are like multiple versions of the same story going around, my thought process is usually like, okay, hold on. Somebody is like the source of all of this bullshit. Let's figure it out. So um, <clears throat> Melina even reaches out to Bose to clear the air and both appear to be willing to speak to each other cordially. Um, I'm probably not going to read all of these. You guys can go through these later. But like, this is just, Melina reaches out. She's like, oh, it was fun seeing a Bob stream. Um, <clears throat> Bo's response, she's like, oh, yeah, it was cool, blah, blah, blah. Like, I hope you don't have any negative opinions of me. And then Melina's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So they reach out to each other, and they seem to be on okay terms. With so much conflict between the three stories, it seemed obvious that figuring out whoever was the source of these lies was most likely the person instigating the conflict behind the scenes. Typically, in my mind, somebody that's lying is somebody that's causing trouble. And I don't have any reason to believe Melina's lying because she's telling me what I see Bob is telling her. So either Bob is lying to me or Erica's or Bose is lying to me. So this is kind of what's in my head. I would need another situation to come up with Bob Seven and Bose streaming together to see all, how all three parties reacted to understand who was misrepresenting facts behind the scenes. If I could peek in and hear Melina expressing anger to Bob Seven about streaming with Bose on a voice call, it's possible that she had downplayed how upset she was on their streams with their streams. If Bose was expressing anger or frustration to Bob Seven about Melina, well then perhaps she was exaggerating things Bob Seven had told her to turn me against Melina. If Bob Seven was telling two different stories to Melina and Bose, then maybe he was the one trying to play both sides to turn people against each other. I'm explaining right now the investigation or whatever, that uh, Bob, the death note or whatever shit that Bob loves to play like 30 clips about. Luckily, such an opportunity arose the next night. On the night of November 9th, Bob Seven and Bose had another late night drinking slash chatting stream that lasted for two hours and 14 minutes. Once their stream finished, Melina woke up and began to message both me and Bob Seven. I immediately called Melina and made a few requests about sending specific messages to Bob Seven regarding the previous night. My assumption was that only one of two things could happen. Either one, he would talk to Melina about last night's stream, as I'd expect him to, because these guys, these guys talk so much and they share everything with each other. Or two, he would try to conceal the stream from Melina because he's going to lie to her about streaming with Bose or about what was said on stream to avoid potential conflict due, the, due to the two different stories he's been telling Melina and Bose. So for instance, maybe he says something negative about Melina to Bose on the stream and he doesn't want her to know about it. I had sent a few, I had her send a few very pointed messages to Bob Seven to see if he would mention the stream. Um, oh, so here's me. I'm, she's like sending me logs of the combo, and I'm suggesting messages to send along as well. So like I tell her like send this message, send this message. Drinking alone sounds so sad. Let's see if he responds to it. Um, sometimes messages are edited. I highlight the edit to give you the time so that you don't think I've gone back and retroactively edited these like three months later or whatever. Okay. And here is her conversation with Bob Seven. Good morning. Hi, I'm real drunk again. I'm an alcoholic now. Why? 
because wine is tasty. Hi, Melina, how are you? I'm good, I just woke up. Why are you drunk, LOL? I drank wine, I like wine. I hope I don't feel like shit in the morning, Melina. Yeah, Bob, what's up? Melina, now is your chance, truthful Bob here, ready to tell only truth. Nice to meet you. LOL, does that mean that you haven't been truthful before? LOL, what an uncharitable interpretation. My heart is open. Is that truly the question you wanna ask? The answer is that I've made efforts to be as truthful as possible. Uh, wait, I'm getting up from breakfast. Drinking alone sounds so sad. I used to do it during summer sometimes when I felt lonely, LOL. Did you fall asleep? Almost, real close, it will happen. How are you feeling? What do you think I should ask? Trying to come up with something now to ask if you're saying you're truthful, LOL. And then he goes to sleep and they wake up eight hours later. <clears throat> Hatter sent a few very pointed messages to Bob Seven to see if he would mention the stream or if he'd talk about it, or more importantly, if he'd delete the stream. Despite the conversation and questioning, Bob Seven never says a thing about Bose or their stream, and eventually he falls asleep. For comparison, Bose openly tells me that she's talking to Bob Seven without me even inquiring about it. Hi, Steven. Sorry, kind of got drunk on stream. I was doing it from my phone, so it was hard to respond. How are you? How's stream been? Um, LOL, aw, that's fine. How was your mobile stream tonight? Was the connection stable? It was good. First time, and I learned from the best. I should be working, but I got drunk on stream. Now I'm hanging out with Bob. He's so fun. Aw, nice, nice. Again, I have no problems with Bob behind the scenes. I'm not talking shit, shit stirring. And Erica just offers up, Bob offers up to me. Uh, I'm sorry, er, um, Bose. Fuck, Bose is such a dumb fucking name. Sorry. Bose offers up to me um, that, uh, you know, she was hanging out with Bob. And Bob seemed to conceal that to Melina, which was strange. Melina suggests to me that she should ask the question directly, but I tell her to wait to see if he deletes the stream the next morning. When I had woken up the next morning, I noticed that the VOD of their stream from the previous night had been deleted, confirming my suspicions that Bob Seven was the one playing games behind the scenes. I called Bose that evening, and I laid out my entire suspicion and subsequent investigation, then told her that it was up to her to figure out who she believes, as I understand I've already broken my trust with her by leaving her in the dark about my relationship problems with Melina. To be clear, I don't think I should have had to divulge those, but I could understand why she felt... Um, like her trust had been betrayed. LOL fuck, what are you up to? Hello, I just got to my second Airbnb and I'm hanging on my laptop. What's the fuck for? What the fuck? How many Airbnbs are you staying at? Two in one hotel for a spa day. It's my vacation. Okay, how are you? Doing okay? Want to chat for a minute? Aren't you streaming, LOL? What's up? I leave stream for about 40 minutes and then I call her and I lay out everything that I had said in terms of my investigation. Oh boy, Bob just called me. Time to see which one of you is crazy. And I say, LOL, just when you're trying to suss out lies, don't be super confrontational. Just talk around it and see what he says. I can substantiate everything I say with logs or anything else 100%. And she says, I mean, I'll take it all with a great assault. Later that night, Bose tells me that she's telling Bob Seven to ease up a little on the relationship drama between Melina and I and to stop using her as a tool in the crusade to save Melina. Now, I don't include this because I don't have proof of this, but I also told Melina the same thing, and she told me that she told Bob just as much. I hope this is funny in a week. <laughs> me gets cozy in bed and gets high. Steven, one of you fucking psychopaths is lying. Referencing our earlier conversation where I told her, either you or Bob Seven is lying. Here's my evidence. This is what I have. Oh my God, more. I spoke with Bob for a few minutes and basically told him, I think he's truly trying to be a good friend of Melina and he actually believes all the stuff he said, which is fine. Bob is entitled to his own opinion. But I told him he did what he could in terms of expressing his concerns to Melina, but at the end of the day, your word is always going to be more powerful than his and he'll never convince her of anything so much better. Uh, he, uh, ugh, and he'll never convince her of anything so much better to just let it be. I also asked him not to use me as a tool to further his point, like saying, Bose is scared for you. Bitch, what the fuck, LOL. He said that was misinterpreted, but I think as long as she's cool with not talking to Bob about your personal lives anymore, it'll be all right. He doesn't seem like he wants any problems with you, LOL. Just giving you info, because I know you're nosy too. Thanks. And again, just establishing a pattern, okay. Um, another thing here of somehow Bob Seven being misinterpreted. But... Another example as well of me, I'm not manipulating their friendship or trying to tell them who they can or cannot be friends with or anything like that. <clears throat> I just want to be clear in this section. None of this is rock solid evidence that would convince a jury in court nor the ring of public opinion of any particular malfeasance. This was merely a personal matter that I was looking into and the final answer satisfied my curiosity insofar as I was confident that games are being played by Bob Seven. Now other people have tried to use my little mini investigation here as a way to discredit everything else I say. 
absolutely nothing in this document, nor any other claims I've made, rely on anything related to this investigation. The only reason I did this was because I was getting conflicting stories about a singular conversation, so I thought that whoever was playing games and lying and confusing people was probably the source of that contention. I did my investigation. I am confident that I had reached a good conclusion, and it seems that everything that I thought was true ended up being true, so I feel more assured that that, converse, that, that uh, investigation was fruitful and successful. Um, again, some people might try to bring up like, well, this wasn't 100% evidence or, oh, Bob Seven brings up, well, I told her the next morning after I deleted the VOD that I streamed. Yeah, you might have. Sure. I don't know why you waited eight hours to say it. And I don't know why you danced around it by saying that you accidentally streamed. You seem to do a lot of things on accident, Bob, but we're going to get to some of those worst things later on, I guess. Um, just establishing a pattern of what's going on, just explaining why, explaining why I believe that this investigation was important for me personally to figure out what was going on behind the scenes. Aftermath. After the dust had settled and I was confident that I'd figured out who was leaking personal information behind the scenes and I shared my thoughts with Melina and Bose, I put everything on the back burner and I carried on with my life. Bose and Bob Seven continued to chat daily, sometimes for hours at a time. Melina and Bob Seven continued to chat daily, sometimes for hours at a time. And I continued streaming as my friendship and activity with Bose declined significantly. I'm used to people speaking poorly of me behind the scenes and, to be blunt, I don't have the time needed. To, um, I don't have the time needed throughout the day to fight against needs working against me in the background. So I figured I would let Melina and Bose make their own decisions about who to be friends with. Bob Seven has no job. He doesn't go to school. He doesn't stream. Um, I'm not going to spend all of my time trying to fight weird proxy war games in the background with him and other people in my life. I just don't have the time to do it. I'm way too busy with other shit. But that's my explanation for this. Over the next few weeks, I find out that Bob Seven is also in calls talking to Pichachu, a close friend of mine, and Arisan, a close friend and an ex-girlfriend of mine. This irritates me as I don't trust him not to divulge more negative personal information or lies about me to these people. I fight a bit about this with Melina, but I ultimately leave it alone as I don't feel it's my place to make decisions about how other people's friendships, about other people's friendships. Bob Seven would later go on to explain how he was just joking when he'd earlier mentioned infiltrating my groups of friends. Here's an audio log of this. Yeah, but you realize that I'm into absurdity and part of the reason that I... Wait, hold on. This is really quiet. I don't know if the thing is quiet or if my audio is turned down. One second. Ah, oh, fuck. These are just going to be quiet. Hopefully they're not all this quiet. This might have just been the recording too, but... Okay. I'll mute my volume when I play this. Here you go. Yeah, but you realize that... I'm into absurdity, and part of the reason that I find that funny is because I think this is an absurd concept. It's the same thing, reason. Do you remember that that stream where it was me, uh, you, Pichu, and Iris on stream, and I was just going off, like, saying, like, oh, yeah, Destiny, I'm trying to infiltrate all your relationships. Like, that's not, like, that's me saying this because I think that this is so absurd. Well, I'm pretty sure you can joke about truth sometimes, which makes it hard to know which one is the real thing and which one isn't. What Melina says here is more true than maybe she realizes. Bob Seven does do a lot of this, where he's, I'm just joking. That was a joke. Oftentimes, if you call him out on something particularly egregious, what he'll say initially was, I was just joking, but then later on, he'll actually go to justify that very thing, which makes it seem like it wasn't a joke. Maybe it was because he was drinking too much. Maybe it's because he did feel anger. I wonder what he'll do in the next minute of this clip. Let's find out. I think you absolutely felt good about knowing that you were becoming friends with all of his friends and that you felt like that was something that he got triggered by and I think you enjoyed it. No, I, I get nothing out of that. Because otherwise you wouldn't have said the thing about asking Steven for permission to talk to Peach. Dude, I just explained to you that that I brought that up because I think that this is an absurd concept. That's not like me joking about truth. Like this is me like going off because like this- No, is, it's, like, a, it's like, for you to try to trigger things. him because you know how he feels about you. It's not what like you're friends and that you was, can was, joke was, or anything was, like that. You're basically just trying to- moment? Yeah, you were. Was I trying to trigger him? The answer is yes, yes. I, in that moment I was drunk and I thought it would be funny to trigger him because he has insane beliefs about me that are so far from reality. This is how you know somebody is a pathological liar. 
is when you when they start with a notice how he starts with one truth it was just a joke bro and then as Molina slowly introduces more evidence notice how his story changes and evolves almost completely it was just a joke okay well hold on I was just joking about it because it's like so absurd okay I was trying to trigger him because I was drunk like okay now again all of this is boring social drama up to this point but I am establishing a very important pattern for how Bob Seven communicates with people On the 14th of December, Bose called me a bit out of nowhere, and we had a short conversation, less than 30 minutes, when she informed me that she felt it was disrespectful. It was a bit disrespectful remaining close to Bob Seven while also continuing our friendship. Now, I tried to go back and find the call logs for this because this was the conversation that Bose had described as being spicy, but I, um, I remember this as being a short convo. Unfortunately, my phone only goes back 30 days, and I was one day short. And when I went into my Verizon uh, business account, I didn't have the ability to bring up older call logs. If either Erica or I, at a later point, can find those call logs, I don't know if you need a subpoena or something, uh, maybe you can find out. But I'm pretty sure this conversation was like less than 30 minutes. Um, she asked me the prior night, hey, can you ring me today? And I said, sorry, I flew in pretty late last night. I'm up now, though. What's up? Do you still want a ring ring? Hmm, yeah, but I'm not feeling super well this morning. Maybe later tonight or tomorrow. I'll hit you up. What's going on? Is everything okay? Yeah, I just hate having convos when my headspace feels off. Ugh, are you free? I can wear my headphones. I have a meeting in like two minutes, but I'll be free after that. What's going on? Are you okay, Erica? Okie dokie. How long do you think it'll be? I may fall back asleep. I don't know. Blah, blah. Could be as short as five minutes or as long as 30. Just talking about an upcoming sponsor thing. I'll keep you updated, though. Okie dokie. Talk later. Okay, hi, hi. About 30 minutes later, I finished my meeting. Hello, I'm in the living room. I'm gonna call your phone. Uh, wait, do Discord. I'm at my computer and my phone reception sucks. She calls me in this time. She tells me, I don't know if I feel comfortable being friends with Bob Seven because, um, I don't know if I feel comfortable being friends with Bob Seven because of how disrespectful he is towards you. Now, Bob Seven claims that at this point, I'm starting to implant all of these horrible, crazy ideas into uh, Erica's mind or into Bose's mind. I would love to see evidence of that. This has never happened. There is no log proving that. There are no conversations I've had showing that. There is no behavior demonstrating that. There is literally not a shred of evidence whatsoever. This is a fantastic delusional lie that Bob Seven tries to push, but there's literally no reason to believe this to be the case. And furthermore, my final conversation with her regarding this call was me literally telling her, I hope you're feeling better after our, today after our chat, and even if I'm not pushing you to defriend somebody or anything, I really appreciate the gesture. It really does mean a lot to me. Not many people go out of the way for me um, for anything, so I really appreciate it. She is the one that brought up the idea of her not trusting Bob Seven. The idea that I planted this idea into her mind is just absolutely not true. And I think that this shows to the contrary. It's not like the most rock solid evidence. I don't have the actual recording of all of my fucking phone calls, but um, yeah. This chat log looks so edited though, Lameo. I, I said I wouldn't read chat, I'm sorry. Somebody said this chat log looks so edited um that chat log is just the end of this chat log you inbred fucking youtuber okay i'm not going to reach out anymore sorry um sorry so i'll show you the full context of that um and i have further logs for everything as well um <clears throat> after our conversation she says big win for me all the way around because i really don't want to hear about everything going on from all sides if it ever comes up and mel mentions reaching out to me can you be like lameo maybe not i was thinking about it and i don't want to send her a message uh, like hey you shouldn't trust me just FYI, don't ask for advice but that's rude as fuck and i think i've always been super cordial with her yeah i understand i never push her to contact her or anything like that ever don't worry fuck sorry for the delayed response catching up on shit today since i just got back from out of town i hope you're feeling better after a chat and then that's the other conversation okay All right. Um, real quick, Bob is like uh, posting a log um, trying to contradict my investigation story. Firstly, it doesn't matter because everything about my investigation has proven to be correct, that Bob Seven talks shit about the scenes. Secondly, Bob changes his Discord to not be in con um, compact mode so that you can't see that when he mentioned that stream, it was actually 10 hours later. He's slipping between. But it makes it look better that he has the dates all lined up because he talks to her past midnight from the prior night. So his logs make it look as though I'm telling her right after, but in reality, it was actually a full 10 to 12 hours later that he said it. But for some reason, he doesn't have timestamps on those messages. It's a pattern, again, that Bob will deliberately misrepresent things, but we'll get to that as well. There's so much good behavior from Bob Seven here. I will say, I thought that he was a worthy adversary in the manifesto off in terms of how he misrepresents things. Unfortunately for him, I have the correct information and I'm not the one lying, so it's a little bit easier for me to play this game because I'm not the one making shit up out of fucking thin air. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> I reiterate as much to her in text form after the conversation that I appreciate her consideration. I'm not going to control who she wants to be friends with. Our relationship is still a bit rocky afterwards, and she feels like she can't really trust anyone at this point, however. Even after this conversation, my relationship with Bose is still, like, pretty messy. 
Of course, Steven, you're my friend. Good morning, Bozo. This is the next day, I believe. Were you actually sick yesterday or just feeling down? Haha, <laughs> pretty down, but thanks for chatting. Is anything else going on or is it just the Bob stuff? To be super on to be honest, it's super polarizing because I hear a lot of awful shit and then I don't really have anyone to talk to because I don't fucking trust anyone in the circle jerk. I can't really even talk to you because who knows what's being recorded or who's gonna read your logs later and play telephone. So I feel like I have to internalize a lot and just go with my gut of who isn't gonna fuck me over. I'm just gonna try to move on and work and dive back into the real world for a bit. So Bose doesn't completely trust me at this point, which is fine. I wouldn't expect it to after everything that's happened. I had planned to do a large canvassing event in Columbus, Georgia, the first weekend of January, and I extended an invite to see if Bose was interested in coming out along with some other streamers. I figured, because I, I don't know, maybe she still wants to, maybe she's friends. This wasn't any sexual invitation or anything. But initially she tells me that she's not going to be able to make it, but later I find out from her that, I'm assuming, two other streamers, I'm really important, and Booksmarts changed her mind about going along. So initially I bring it up, she talks about dates, maybe bookies, something, blah, 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 and then she's like, I'm gonna veto on Georgia, actually. I want to book everything, and I can't really justify the cost, even if I get a stream out of it. Are you still doing Alex Jones, though? I wanna book the Airbnb. Okay, gotcha, I'm booking hotel rooms for everyone, if it helps, blah, 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 what's the name of the hotel? I saw you in a motel in DC, blah, blah, blah. I can't go very clearly. And then later, I don't know if she's having a conversation with I'm really important and book smarts so or what changes her mind. But a few days later, she's like, Oh, I'll be in Georgia, by the way, for one day. Can you link me to the discord? What the fuck? Wow. Glad someone else. Oh, I delete one thing here. And it's just like a link to my canvassing discord because I don't want um, every random person joining my canvassing discord. But um, that so I link the discord here that's deleted. But um, glad someone else could convince you bitch smiley face. Lameo, I didn't know I'm really important to book smarts for going to uh, I just don't want to spend $800 be bored for three days. Oh, wow. Um, all of this is going to also establish the idea, and we'll continue to do this as well. One of Bob Seven's major claims is that me and Erica had been plotting for weeks to do some massive takedown of Bob Seven. I believe that I put out more than enough information to not only contradict that narrative, but to show that it is patently absurd. All three of us are incredibly uncomfortable. Melina and Erica fucking hate each Bose. Melina and Bose fucking hate each other, and there is no prior communication going on, even implying that we had some huge plan about Bob Seven. Now, why did we go public about Bob Seven? Woof. That's a really good question. I'm glad that you asked. Stay tuned. Oh, I should have made commercials. That's what would have been good for this. The confrontation in Georgia. On January 1st, Melina and I arrived in Atlanta, Georgia, and made an hour-long drive south to Columbus so that I could check in to the hotel and begin coordinating for my canvassing event. Bose was a bit nervous about seeing Melina at this event, and Melina had expressed similar discomfort to me after seeing Bose as, about seeing Bose as Bob Seven was sending her huge negative logs of Bose um, through Pichachu to her on the 1st of January. Um, here's Bose. Sedge said, dinner was at 7 p.m. I'll try and make it, but also, you're coming from Disney for the super spreader event, huh? Wait, are Nathan and Mel coming to Georgia? Yep, is that gonna be a fucking problem? Um, she was a little bit uncomfortable with them coming. Um, and then Melina, um, Bob Seven was sending logs to Pichachu, and then Pichachu asked, and Melina, uh, Pichachu shared those logs with um, Melina. Huge logs about Bose talking mad shit about Melina. Now, Melina has no fucking idea why the fuck, um, Melina has no idea why Bose is talking all this shit, but this is Bose talking to Bob. Melina said that she wanted to be with you because she's never been on her own. She's always had someone else to move on with. Like, that scares me, and that's really fucking shitty to Steve. I think Melina knows what she's doing more than she lets on, and I think that when she finds someone to latch onto and move on to them, she'll just leave him, and I'll never tell him that shit, and once again, that's me being a bad friend to Steve protecting myself. Bose protects herself, period. Actually, fuck it up, unhinged. I think Melina knows exactly what the fuck is up. I think you paint her. I think you painted her as a dumb naive girl, but I started paying attention. I don't think she is. She's tit for stats with Steve, blah, 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 blah. So these are incredibly negative logs that Bob Seven is sending to Peach and Melina about Bose. It kind of sort of seems like Bob Seven has a vested interest in Melina and Bose never fucking talking to each other. It almost seems like maybe Bob Seven is fucking terrified when women speak up, uh, which is another pattern that we've established, and we'll get to that later as well. But it seems like Bob Seven is trying very hard to poison the well here between Melina and Erica, between Melina and Bose, so that they never actually have any type of meeting to coordinate their stories, or, or rather to get their stories straight, or to see what the fuck is actually going on. Melina and Bose, now if you watched my stream from that morning, I'm pretty sure there are, I don't have the VOD, that's really good, but I'm pretty sure that like, Bose literally says to me like, hey, what's up? And Melina's like just fucking ignoring her, okay? Sorry, Erica is Bose. On January 1st, no wait, hold on. Melina and Bose are both around me on the morning of the 2nd. 
but it's clear that both of them feel incredibly awkward around one another. Melina decides to leave the conference room and sends Bose a long message saying that she wants to clear things up between them because she's tired of the fake bullshit acting nice. So at this point, Melina sends Bose all of the logs that Bob sent to Pichachu, and then she opens. I don't want to have some fake bullshit acting nice. If you want to talk, we can, but I can't deal with some weird shit. Bose replies, do you think I'm wrong? Feel free to speak up. Melina says, of course, this is some crazy shit. Unless someone told you something, but still crazy. This is 100% my interpretation of you. I don't have input from you. So if you want to give input, I'm super happy to listen to see what actually makes sense. But yes, from what I've seen and what Bob told me and what I've heard from Steven, this is my interpretation of you. Okay, you want to sit down and chat? Sure, but I'd prefer to talk through logs or in person with a recording so nothing gets misinterpreted. We can record it if you like. I know it sounds inorganic, but I'm not really into telephone. I mean, you can have a recording of it if you like. Yay, if you want to do that through your phone. Yeah, of course. If you don't think everything I said is true, I'm happy to talk. I think everything you said is 100% wrong and insane, lol. So yeah, why insane? And I hope you're not walking around saying that to people or something. I don't talk about you because I'm not a manipulative cunt. LOL, LOL, I mean, you said that to Bob, so I don't know what you say to others. I think you're highly manipulative because you reached out to me under the guise of wanting help slash advice. But you tried to set me up to send Discord logs, so yeah, that felt shitty. You can explain that, though, when we chat. Why would I? Where do you get that from? Okay, and when? So they talk a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. Um, this isn't super duper important. So the important thing that I'm establishing here, okay, again, Bob Seven has this running narrative that Melina, me, and Bose all had been constructing these like plans for weeks. It is impossible and absurd to even suggest that. Melina and Bose hated each other on that on the day of that fucking event. Everybody that saw the stream saw that they fucking hated each other, okay? And I have plenty of logs between both of them and Peach to prove that. Bose fucking hated Melina, and Melina fucking hated Bose. The idea that there was some conspiracy is absolutely bullshit, and I invite Bob Seven to release any type of convoluted, twisted log or recording to try to prove otherwise. I am confident that he is not able to do so. The only reason Melina and Bose hate each other, as they've reiterated several times, is because of things that Bob has told either party. Um, let me go through this one real quick. They talk, sorry. I don't know if the time is 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. Um, because I don't remember how Discord handles time zones. Um, I think it might be 11 a.m. But they talk, and then from 11 a.m., I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna speak in the time of the logs. From 8 to 2.44, there's nothing. In this time, Melina and Bose have a long talk, they figure out all the absurd shit that Bob Seven is saying about them. And then Bose calls Pichachu to have another conversation to figure out what's going on. After their conversation, Bose tells Melina on Discord, just had a long call with Peach. Bob has lied about a lot of things to me, about me as well, to Peach. I don't know how I feel about it all, but just be careful. Yeah, chat with her when you can. Yeah, yeah, I will. I should call her today. Was it just like full-on lies of just super twisted stuff? Literally full-on lies. Peach is saying maybe she doesn't remember stuff correctly. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry about that. So I'll take it all with a grain of salt. And then I'm just going to read the last log here because it becomes relevant in the next sentence. All good. You okay? Yes, I'm super happy. Ultra super happy. I love resolving things. It takes so much stress off from me. I'm happy to hear that. I'm sorry you feel okay about our convo. I called him earlier because I'm really bummed about the, ball, the Bob stuff. Like, really bummed. And I'm happy you're a cool and good person. Thanks, Mama. Who did you call? I called Steve. I was going to tell both of y'all to come to my room because I'm real mad, but, ooh, now, I don't have the energy. Bob is bored. I don't care if y'all want to. Haha. But I'm real mad at the wall. Right now? Do it. Y'all coming? I'm reading back and forth. Sorry. Okay, he's come. Um, oh, Melina asked if I want to go to her room, but I'm playing Perfect Tower 2 on my laptop and I need to be watching my castle. So, oh, can you come to our room? Um, Steven said he wants to sit on his laptop. LOL. Bo says, what's the room number? Melina says 313. And then Bo comes to our room and then we chat for a little bit. <clears throat> I'm going through logs, lol. He basically just shit talks to you and compares me to you a lot, says I'm better than you, but I would never bite. Um, Bose is showing some logs between her and Bob or whatever. So like you can, oh, so these are conversations where like Bo Bob will be talking to Melina and then he'll make up a reason to hang out with Melina and he'll be telling Bose like, um, Bose is saying, you can ring me if you're free. Bob says, that sounds way cooler than talking to Melina. So he's like shit talking her basically. Like why say that? And then he made up an excuse to get off a call with you and then called me and talked shit about you for an hour. Really? When was this? Jeez, fuck, I just wonder why he does this. Um, now it's hard to verify this because these are only things that have been told, but supposedly from Melina and Bose, 
Bob would constantly bring me up or Melina up and shit talk us. I don't know why. Melina tells me even if she would try to get off the conversation, Bob said we'll do that. Um, and then Bose tells me the same, that Bob, for whatever reason, was just obsessed with shit talking me. After two to three hour talk, it becomes clear that both girls realize that Bob Simon has been playing everyone behind the scenes with an unreal amount of half-truths and doublespeak. Now, <clears throat> before I get into this next section, uh, just to give you some overview, I am running the largest canvassing event in Georgia for a weekend, and I am on two to three hours of sleep every single night. As a result of that, my memory is not perfect, and I don't remember every fucking call I've had or have not had. This has led me to making, this has led me to walking back statements that I made that upon further investigation were actually correct. One of those statements was whether or not Casey Tron and Minx were in the initial girl call. I had said that they were not, Casey Tron claims she was, then brings up that I asked her a question in the call or someone else did, and then I second guessed myself and said, fuck, oh, maybe her and Minx were in the call. I have gone back and I have timestamped, checked the group and everything. Casey Tron and Minx were never in the original girl call ever. I have no fucking idea why the fuck they think it is appropriate for either of those clout chasing dipshits to involve themselves so publicly in this and defend somebody who is being abusive towards a girl that is being manipulated into changing her sexual harassment story to, co to cover for Bob Seven. So to be clear, Fuck Casey Tron and fuck Minx for trying to help cover up for Bob Seven while he abuses Ophelia. I am going to do things in this overall presentation that are probably going to make Ophelia uncomfortable. To that, I am sincerely sorry. I'm going to try to temper my tone. I want it to be very clear at this point right now. I do not hold her personally responsible for anything that she says because holy fuck, I do not envy her fucking position. She has been mind fucked to fucking hell and back with Bob Seven gaslighting the fuck out of her. But I know what she said. Other people have known what she said. And we have Bob admitting to things that he's done with her. So I just want that to be made clear as we go forward. I don't hold any ill will against Ophelia, but her story, for reasons that are going to become very clear later on in this document, is incredibly important to include as we speak about the things that have happened. <clears throat> um, did I say fuck Casey John and Minx? I just want to throw that one in there again. Um, also, unlike Bob Seven, when Zintani complained about her stuff being leaked against her will while she was crying with him in DMs and while she was pleading with him on Twitter and while she was typing in chat, I won't be banning anybody from my chat because they may or may not be uncomfortable with what's going on while simultaneously claiming that they support my narrative. <clears throat> so we've spoken now about Melina and Bose finally, um, finally confronting each other. Ooh, a message in Twitch chat. You really think Casey doesn't have evidence? You know what? It would be horrible. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with you, okay? I'm gonna be totally honest with you, okay? Because there are parts of this document that might be a little bit shaky, and I'm not 100% sure, um, about Casey Tron's involvement. I wish that I had, um, I wish that I would have recorded audio with Casey Tron literally admitting to Bob Seven doing some of the things he'd done. That would have been a really good thing to include in this document. Huh. I wonder, I wonder if we'll see any of that later, which is doubly strange because Casey Tron tweeted out earlier that every audio log provided was probably going to be from people that I was actively fucking. Now, unless Casey Tron is banging me in my sleep, it's a very interesting claim for her to make, but we'll see what she says later on in this document. <clears throat> the next chapter. The party grows. Once Melina and Bose have finished their conversation, Bose calls Pichachu to confirm a lot of her suspicions. After they chat, Bose comes to our room at around 5.30 p.m. EST on the 2nd to have a chat about things where I reiterate things that I've said concerning Bob Seven in the past. Now, this conversation was incredibly eye-rolly for me because it's basically me listening to Melina and Bose figure out all the fucking horrible shit that I've known about Bob Seven for fucking months. I know he manipulates the fuck out of you guys. I know that these people are fucking crazy. I know that he's saying and now they're finally figuring it out. So like, yeah, good job. Congratulations. Like, welcome to the fucking party. Welcome to my fucking life. Melina and Bose continue to chat throughout the night, sharing revelations about the lies that Bob Seven has told. At one point, Zintani responds to a tweet in DMs from Bose, sharing her similar experiences with Bob Seven. Zintani says to Bose, girl, I've been there exactly where you are. I'm not sure if Bob Seven does it on purpose or not. Shit, I'm sorry. And this is where um, Bose is basically talking to Zintani about her experiences with Bob Seven. <clears throat> During this conversation, 
Zintani communicates to Bose that Bob Seven has said so many negative things to Zintani concerning Melina, causing her to dislike her. This is Bose's recollection of that conversation. So I send her a video ranting about stuff, and she calls me on Discord, and basically, I just told her what happened to me, how Bob tried to turn me against you. Then she realized she never really had a problem with you. Everything was via Bob. And she sent me a bunch of logs of him being insane, and then she felt awful, realizing he just tricked her. I was in the logs. It's Bob talking about you to Zintani and just straight up gaslighting her. She sent those to me now. Wow, it all makes sense now. This is all so sad. <clears throat> Zintani, on the 4th, would later message me and tell me just as much. All of this coming to light has changed a lot of my opinions on you and Melina. I want to apologize for being a bitch. I had a completely different picture of what kind of person you and Melina are. Listening to you expose this stuff made me feel a whole lot better slash safer. This was the, um, this was the log of her after I did my exposed stream. Casey Tron never said she was in, a call, in the call. Um, she said she was added to a call where all the girls filled her in on everything. Did she say that? Hmm. Unlucky. Very unlucky of her to say that. Wow. <clears throat> um, hopefully I remember to document maybe some of the things that she said later on in this, but I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I want to emphasize this part of the story. I want you to understand how this group call grew to include so many other women. Bob Seven narrative that he's tried to spun here are two big parts. One, that Bose and I had conspired weeks in advance to set this up. I have already proven, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that is absolutely not true. I have an audio recording of Bose and Melina hashing out their problems for the first time. I've shown several logs of both of them hating each other right up to the morning they talked when we were already in Georgia. And there has been zero evidence demonstrating that any type of wider conspiracy existed. And I have evidence of Bob Seven sending horrible logs to Pichachu with a vested interest trying to keep Melina and Erica talking to one another. This part of his narrative absolutely crumbles under the slightest bit of investigation. Fuck him for trying to invent that lie. The second part of his story relies on this idea that Bose ran around maliciously collecting women to feed lies to about Bob Seven in order to get everybody on some big cancel Bob story. Initially, Bose didn't actually want to go to Austin with Bob's story. We're going to get into that later. I want to be very clear also as I bring up this document. I am able to substantiate what I know and what I've seen and what Melina knows and what Melina has seen. I trust everything that Melina says 1 million percent because she has never lied to me and everything I've ever verified has always been true. I also trust Pichachu 99.999 percent. I've never seen her lie to me. She doesn't come off as that kind of person. Um, Bose, I've only known her for a couple months. I don't think she would lie. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but when I went out to make this document, I, would, I was initially not really trying to corroborate or prove any of the claims that Erica had made because I don't really think it was part of my story, despite the fact that Bob Seven tried to tie my reputation to her several times. However, in the cataloging of all of the events, the investigating of all the different things that have happened, and in putting together the entire story from start to finish, I feel pretty confident that almost everything Erica said is true. Not only that, I feel like she has been one of the most fucked in this entire circumstance. And not only that, I think I can go on to prove exactly why she said the things that she has, why she feels the way that she does, and explain why she lashed out on stream in such a negative way. <clears throat> um, okay, Zantani messages me, so remember this chapter. The party grows, okay? Also, fuck the doubters, okay? And fuck you, Bob Seven. Bob Seven, we'll take a quick intermission. Bob Seven, man, he's been running around in the background. You see he's trying to fucking rally the fucking troops. He must have messaged Minx. He must have messaged Caseytron. I think he messaged Ellie. Um, he's messaged all sorts of fucking people like, tweet out, you don't want to be involved in this, tweet out. He ran to Ophelia, told Ophelia, tweet out, the, you don't want to talk about you, tweet out, blah, 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 blah. The clip that Ophelia tweeted this morning saying, I don't want to be brought up in this story, was clipped by Bob Seven's own account. I cannot believe that somebody that has prided himself so much on his ability to manipulate people would actually fucking clip that thing on his main account and he wouldn't think to use a smurf to do it. Because even the people in LSF, while the narrative is still massively against me, while the wave of bullshit is still fucking smashing against me, Bob Seven fucked up, and even people in the LSF threads was notice, were noticing that Bob Seven had clipped the very thing that Ophelia had tweeted. Oh, and also for a short intermission, <clears throat> I think that my initial defense was pretty bad um, because I Pokemon myself. I'm not going to lie. Um, I definitely, 
I definitely could have done. I definitely could have done a better job. However, I will say, hats off to Bob Seven's Discord. Man, you guys really played the fuck out of a lot of these LSF threads. I noticed that later on in the night when I had a conversation with Bob Seven that all those threads got massively downvoted and all the ones that supported him got massively upvoted. You guys are monsters, man. 24 results for LSF threads posted on Bob Seven's Discord as you guys were trying to fucking game that fucking subreddit. You guys are crazy. All right, man, my first LSF post, can I beg for upvotes or nah? Link it. <clears throat> All of these threads, holy shit, being posted in this Discord with people spam fucking upvoting. Nice job. Amen. Grats on that. You got your guys' coordination here? God damn, you guys were fucking on it. So not only props to Bob Seven, because you're obviously very good at you have the gift of a silver tongue, as Oslot would say, the mark of a good officer and of a liar, okay? Very good at talking away out of a whole bunch of shit, okay? Very good at coordinating a lot of people. Um Honestly, your only fuck-up was that you're lying, because if you were telling the truth, yeah, I think you'd make a very convincing order. Um, but yeah, um, fuck you. Anyway, intermission over. Um, nice nice brigading there, guys. Nice brigading. Continuing with The Party Grows, and I'm sorry to reiterate for a third time, just establishing how this Discord group grew out to have so many people. On January 3rd, Melina, Bose, and Pichachu have a Discord call at 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon in which they discuss Bob's things Bob7 has said about not only them, but potentially other women as well. Melina decides to drag in Redacted One to see if she has had similar experiences as she's a mutual friend of Melina and Bob. After chatting for a while with Redacted One, Melina, Bose, and Pichachu all realized they'd heard similar stories from Bob7 about being disgusted by a sex dream he'd had about another streamer, Ophelia, among other negative things they'd heard. So I went through Bob's logs with Molina, and I found a reference to the story. Again, remember, in the same slimy pattern that he always uses. He's always vague, and he'll verify it later in a voice call, but never on text. Ah, uh, yeah, my dream's been fucking with me. Really? Is it still about Megan? No, well, one of the nights, yeah. We had a pretty unfortunate, um, had a pretty unfortunate sex dream, LOL. What did you dream? Damn, with who? What happened? Lameo, well, I ain't going into way too cringe. The person it was with is the cringe part. This is the part where you guess. You guess. Bringing up something, leaving the other person to guess about it. Hmm, I wonder if that type of pattern of behavior will become relevant later on. Oh, wait. Um, I really want to know. Oh, this Megan stuff is completely irrelevant personal stuff. But, um, <clears throat> oh, wait, I really want to know. And I'm not going to answer yet. I'll share it at some point. But right now, it's still too cringe to think about. Wow. Physical pain. Wow, I'm so curious. Hey, stop feeling weird. Next time we talk on call, I'll explain. Oh, you don't want to type it either. Interesting pattern of behavior. Pichachu also reiterating the same thing. How he had a sex dream about her and was disgusted or whatnot. And him telling a separate story about how his friend told him he only hangs out with pretty girls. And he thought Ophelia was an exception because she's ugly, which multiple other girls heard as well. <clears throat> After dragging Ophelia into the call, all five women realize that Bob Seven is speaking negatively about almost every girl behind their backs. In this call, it's also revealed that Bob Seven is making false claims to Ophelia. Pichachu and Melina, uh, I'm sorry, to Ophelia, Pichachu, and Melina about things I've said to Bella, a friend of mine, claiming that I continued messaging her while dating Melina, telling her that I loved her and wanted her back. <clears throat> Pichachu recalling that conversation. I think it was impromptu. Like, he was talking about you and Mel's relationship, probably. And I can skim through the audio calls. Might take a bit. You want me to? Or do you want me to verbally confirm? LOL. Because there is no way I would randomly think of you DMing Yellow Spoon Girl. I hardly know anything about her. And he told another girl, I forgot who, it might have been during the voice call, about the Yellow Spoon DMing thing, too. And then I figured out later that this is Ophelia. And he said, yeah. So he's asking girls about it or telling them about it more than one of us. Um, I could show you logs proving that I haven't said that to Bella, but I could also, if I was lying, I would just doctor those logs. But so if you ever want to, I mean, this wasn't happening, but if Bob thinks it was happening, welcome to uh, post proof in the contrary. <clears throat> um, here's a small aside because Melina had confronted Bob in a private conversation. And here are a couple of excerpts from that conversation. Melina later confronts Bob about this on a private call and he weasels around how this was brought up by claiming Pichachu brought it up. Now again, is Bob lying here? It's never an exact lie. He's so good at dancing around in these conversations. Listen to this call with Melina. Can, can, you, can you fill me in? Like, 
yet of what like what awful things that I did because like again like when, when we've been doing the rundown here I, I've been being honest of like saying like oh yeah I don't think I handled that well but okay. I don't think I've why just are you once. telling people that Steven is telling girl with yellow spoon or yellow spoon girl that she, he loves her and shit like that and that I don't know about it why are you telling people that because Peach asked, and that's what Santani said to me, and I have zero, like, I have, like, no Peach asked, Sintani, does, but... does Yellow Spoon Girl send, or does Steven send I love you messages to Yellow Spoon Girl? Is that what she asked from out of nowhere? Why not? Definitely. Peach has a recording of that call where it's actually brought up. Now, does Peach ask? Kind of. You determine for yourself how it's brought up initially. Definitely convinced that he's crazy, but I'm willing to be open to like Melina also being crazy. I think I have enough evidence to to be pretty overall evidence in that fact. Yeah. From just Melina or like generally? No, no, from Bose and outside sources and seeing him on stream talk about things and then realize that like he's being more truthful than I realized on stream. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I think it's more reliable if it if your perception doesn't just come from Melina. If I mean, it, it doesn't just come from her. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Which is I, good. I, because... yeah, yeah, I've had Bose say some stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I guess th there's like one weird fact that I know that I'm only like 50% confident in. Notice again how he brings up. There's one weird thing that I know that I'm only a little bit confident in. The same pattern of bringing something up, letting the other person ask about it, and then claiming that they asked about it. Which is like, I like, it was something that that's to me, that I don't because like I don't really trust her. Like I I don't know how true it is, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like she told me a detail about her and Yellow Spoon Girl that I how am I supposed to know if that's reality? Yeah. But it, yeah, but it's concerning. Can I know what it is? Uh. I guess so. It's uh. Can can you can you fill me? And then after that, he goes on to repeat the story that he's not even sure is true. By the way, so in that story, he presents that as Molina uh, as Pichachu bringing it up when he's volunteering the information. Um, now again, as I've said multiple times, this is going to be a pattern in all of his conversations. Molina later confronts him about this in a private call, and he weasels around how this is brought up by claiming Pichachu brought it up. Um. I'm going to give me one second. I'm going to see if I can open these in like a browser so that I can use my, um, because I have a plugin for like YouTube stuff. I don't know if it'll work though. Sound fixer won't. Ugh. Uh, yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. These are just going to be quiet. Turn your volume up for these guys. Sorry. Um, I'll be releasing the full manifesto afterwards as well. So you guys can go through and listen to all of these audio logs yourself. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Listen to how Bob7 talks his way around this conversation, okay? Bob7 attempts to convince Melina that him leaking logs to everyone is actually him being the most honest person. Uh, like, you know, I think a lot about the concept of um, people being unwilling to, to, to show their true self. And I think a lot of this is just the chaos coming from me attempting to do so like if someone asks me how i'm feeling towards something like i'm going to tell them for the most part with with my close friends with the people that i'm close to like i'm going to engage honestly like even when i engage with iris like i was trying to be blunt as possible like i just wanted to, to be straight up with her because i felt like in, in that moment i owed her that but yeah with my with my close friends it, it really is the case that um which I guess then you could argue like, well, then you weren't a close friend to me because you were uh, more honest with other people than you were to me. And I'll accept that. Um, I think that- That, that I was being more honest than you were? No, 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 that I was being more honest with every other person, but you know, like if, if you want to say that- like, But why? Sure. Why do you say that I'm like one of your closest friends in that case? Why do you say that and you're not being honest or anything? So he's trying to say that his he's being the most honest person by leaking logs of Molina. Again, none of this is really that important, just establishing a pattern of how he speaks. Bob Seven attempts to convince Molina that him leaking logs to everyone is actually him being the most honest person, and then says that maybe he lies without trying to lie. I just don't understand. If you're thinking like 
that these are like dishonest things, right? Because this is something you lied about, right? Yeah, but like, like again, you lied like, about multiple things. Did, uh, again, like I, I think that I could lie while well, not uh, like trying to lie. You know, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Sense. What does that mean? There was yeah, know, not your intention to lie, but you did it. No, 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 because like you, there, there's just conflicting desires. Like, um, and a good example of this is, uh, you have you ever had to lie on the behalf of someone else's privacy? I don't remember. What? Just think, think about. Oh, I don't. Stuff. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, that, that's like a, a good example of. Like, but I mean, you, know, you don't care about privacy. <laughs> Um, I was respecting Boses over you, for sure. <laughs> Why? Why? That's so weird. Because, yeah, no, I, I, again, like, you, you could judge me for that, that's fine. But yes, I was, I was prioritizing Boses' trust over you. <clears throat> he also immediately backtracks when Melita confronts him about whether or not he's called Ophelia Bear Ugly. Um, another common thing that liars will do is they start a lie, and then once you present more evidence, then they backtrack on the lie, and then they create another lie on the spot. Um, this is something that Bob Seven will do several times in several calls with a lot of different people. Here's another example of this. But, I mean, I think Ophelia knows how I feel about her. I think she, she can feel pretty confident about how I feel about her. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if I would go tell her... And me and Bulls would do that? What do you think she would say? I mean, I don't think that's honest. I don't think I called her ugly. No. But if there's more, yeah, multiple like, people saying that they heard that, what do you think she would say? Because this is something you've done. I've called this her This is something ugly. you said, yeah. And you've said, you also said this, that, um, what, you remember when we joked about like, oh, you only have attractive friends? And then you said, oh, <clears throat> yeah, I can name one person. And then you named her. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, it's very that, clear what you, like what you Yeah, mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Notice so another pattern that Bob Seven does a lot is he will own a lot of small lies so that he can tell a big lie. This will become very important later on. And then also another pattern is he will lie until he's caught, then he will immediately pivot own that lie, and then move on to the next thing because he, he doesn't want to focus on the fact that he just got caught lying. Again, these particular little stories, not necessarily that important, but they go on to display like a rather cunning, manipulative way that he talks to people. I want to establish this as well because even though I was frustrated for a long time with Melina and Bose continuing their friendship with Bob Seven, I understood why it was the case. Bob Seven is very, very, very good at talking. If you put him in a room with one other person, he will fucking confuse the fuck out of them. Um, one of the most exonerating feelings I've had is that when I gave my YouTube editor a lot of this footage so that we could go through and start to compile things, even he was saying shit like, dude, I know what's happened in this story, and even I'm getting mindfucked listening to Bob Seven recollect it because he is so snaky and so slimy with how he will just lie, move to another story, lie, own a lie, reflect, deflect, like talk around something, speak nonsense. Like, well, I'm the most honest person because I'm leaking logs about you to other people that I'm just not honest with you, but I'm most, and sometimes I lie, but I'm like, he is so good at talking around everything, which is one of the reasons why initially I probably should have documented carefully uh, uh, a document like this rather than just try to speak to the uh, insane shit that he talks about. I'll finish this. Sorry. Yeah, that's, it's yeah, very that, clear what, what, like, what yeah, you Yeah, 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 that's... Yeah, yeah. Like, if she would hear I, that, what do you think? Like, here's my my point is that you're saying a lot of dumb shit to people about others. That is my okay, point. That, that, that's a decent point. I should just be... Uh, but I think, again, like, I, I would like to say that I, I think a feeling knows how I feel. But that, that is a weird thing. So I, I would... That is weird. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that one. Because on some some level, like, I, I'm being very honest with you and Bose in that moment. But you could argue that it's shitty. In that moment, I was being very honest, but <clears throat> okay. So let me just summarize that paragraph again. Melina later confronts him about this on a private call, and he weasels around how this was brought up by claiming that Pichachu had originally brought it up. Bob Seven attempts to convince Melina that him leaking logs to everyone is actually him being the most honest person, and then says maybe he lies without trying to lie. He also immediately backtracks when Melina confronts him about whether or not he's called Ophelia Bear ugly. From there... 
Bose drags in Redacted 2 because they're close friends, though Redacted 2 doesn't have much more to add to the conversation. In the course of this conversation, Bose also reveals that Bob7 has screen shared nude pictures of both Melina and Redacted 1 without their knowledge. And Pichachu and Bose generally agree that Bob7 misuses his asexual status to solicit girls for sexual conversations or nudes. I don't know if this is him being honest or manipulative, but I know that when we were talking, he really um, emphasized the fact that after breaking up with his girlfriend, he like can't feel sexually attracted to other girls. Like he's having, he's like not sexual at all. He doesn't have a sex drive. He's like talking to a bunch of girls and they're like um, coming on to him sexually, but that he has no interest in them whatsoever. So like we, when we would talk about, he would ask me questions about like really personal questions about my sex life, um, like personal questions about my kinks and stuff. and. When he would ask, when he would ask about it, he would emphasize that he was just like curious, and that I like didn't have to worry because he wasn't, like he does, he's not experiencing sexual attraction or anything right now. Now it's feeling a little weirder because now I'm like, wait, was he like getting off on that, like to tell Ophelia I'm gonna fuck Peach first? Like now I'm like, wait, wait, but I thought that he wasn't. <clears throat> okay, so now you kind of understand, hopefully, how you have a little bit of a better picture of how that chat originally grew. The idea that me or Bose or Melina or some conjunction of us all conspired to get a whole bunch of girls just randomly in a call to dig out fucking confessions about Bob Seven is absolutely not true. It grew pretty organically as every girl started to realize, wait, holy shit, um, it's holy shit, like, they talk shit about him, like, oh shit, like, he talks shit about her, like, oh shit, he talks shit about her, and that's more or less how the call grew out. <clears throat> now, big boss. On the night of January 3rd, Bose and Melina agree that it's incredibly toxic that Bob Seven is soliciting nudes from and talking shit about so many different girls in the Austin Show ecosystem while simultaneously working as a producer for him. Spurred on by these realizations, now, something that I haven't talked about yet is Ophelia Bear's statements in this call. That'll come up later. Spurred on by these realizations and by Ophelia's statements and concerns, they reach out to have a call with Austin. The reason why Bose ever considered reaching out to have a call with Austin is because of Ophelia Bear's statements and the fact that she explicitly expressed concern that she wasn't going to be able to do anything because Bob Seven was a producer on the Austin show. We're going to talk more about this in the other parts of the document, but I, when I first heard Erica, um, when I first heard Bose on her stream, like talking about how Ophelia is fuck her, blah, 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 I fucking cringed. My, you could put a fucking piece of coal in my fucking asshole and it would make diamonds. That's how cringy it was listening to um, Bose talk about her and describe her. Like, dude, not a good look. When I went back and I listened, because I wasn't there for that whole like 10 girl call, because I, I was doing my canvassing event. When I, back, when I went back and I listened to Ophelia's statements during that call, Bose had explicitly said that she didn't want to go to Austin um, because she didn't want to threaten Bob's job, that she didn't want to do any of those things. And the only reason she did was because Ophelia herself was expressing concern that Bob Seven worked for Austin and that the inappropriate things that he was doing was going to mess up her professional life. That was the main driver for why Bose approached Austin. So the fact that she did that, and now Ophelia, after talking to Bob Seven, is throwing Bose under the bus, makes me a lot more sympathetic to why Bose was so upset with her. Though I still think Bose should have chilled the fuck out. She's obviously very emotional when she's talking about this. But we're going to get more to that part of the story later. <clears throat> Any proof? Um, proof for that would be really hard to come by, wouldn't it? Um, man, fuck. I guess we'll just have to wait and see, huh? On the night of January 3rd, this is the chapter, Big Boss. On the night of January 3rd, Bose and Melina agreed, oh, I'm rereading some of this, but <clears throat> Bose and Melina agree that it is incredibly toxic that Bob Seven is soliciting nudes from and talking shit about so many different girls in the Austin show ecosystem while simultaneously working as a producer for him. Spurred on by these realizations and by Ophelia's statements and concerns, they reach out to have a call with Austin. 
Austin agrees that the accusations are incredibly troubling, but not wanting to fire someone without giving them a chance to defend themselves, Austin says that they will have a longer call later on with Bob Seven present to defend himself. After this call, they have a short call with Casey Tron, with Melina, Bose, and me, asking if she'd had any strange experiences with Bob Seven or knew any strange behavior. She doesn't have much to add to the conversation and even agrees that he pushes the boundaries too far with other girls via jokes and listens while Pichichu shares her experiences with him as well. Some of the tweets that Casey Tron made earlier defending Bob Seven feel very strange to me. But I'm just like, damn, I feel like Bob got really big headed and I feel mm -hmm. like he just thought that he was infallible and maybe he thought that it was like all a joke or something that even whenever he like called girls and was super pushy with them, it was like a joke and he was infallible for it because he's Bob or something. I don't know. Yeah. I cannot tell you how incredibly fucking angry I am that Casey Tron, somebody that I kind of sort of considered a friend, would step out and put her fucking nose into this when she was on a fucking call with me, Bose, and Melina listening and shared the exact same type of story with Bob Seven and then would later come out and help corroborate Bob Seven's story while he was manipulating Ophelia to change hers. I think that Casey Tron should fall on this as hard as Bob Seven does. I am actually shocked that she had the fucking audacity to come out on her fucking stream and try to say that she didn't think the allegations were real. It was just fucking Bose's word, blah, 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 blah. After she makes the exact same statements behind the scene. Fuck her for that. I am so absolutely floored that she would have the audacity, the competence to come out and say all the stupid shit that she's been tweeting today while saying this exact fucking thing to us in conversations later on. It is unbelievable to me that she would do that. Fuck you, Casey Tron. What a fucking stupid thing to do. And on top of that, she even listens in as Peach Chu shares her own experiences with Bob Seven. But hey, I guess sometimes protecting your friendships and networking for fucking clout are more important than actually like revealing when people are fucking with people behind the scenes and then supporting abusers that are actively manipulating young fucking girls that are just trying to fucking make it in the Twitch world. You know, whatever floats your boat, Casey Tron. Um, right. I found out about that today and I was like even more disgusted. But yeah. yeah, he's just been lying to all of us, going behind our backs, pretending to like be asexual so that he can hear. It's almost like when a guy tells you like, oh, don't worry, I'm like gay. So that you open right. up to him and you feel more yeah. comfortable. But really, they're like not. And he's been like, I don't know, getting off to all of the personal stuff we've been telling him, I think. And then yeah. telling other girls that he is sexually into us. I also want to say Casey Tron has made false allegations today that me and her had a sexual relationship because she tweets out prediction there will be no allegations that don't involve blindly trusting a piece of information from Melina or Bose who are both fucking destiny my understanding as of right now is that I have never had a sexual relationship with Casey Tron and I can corroborate some of the same allegations said behind closed doors with her own fucking mouth I don't know why the fuck she felt so confident tweeting this I'm even more floored that she's even involved in this at all when she wasn't part of any of these original conversations this was the only call that she was involved in she wasn't in the prior one when all the other girls were speaking up I don't know why the fuck she would stick her neck out here for Bob Seven it blows my fucking mind what an irresponsible piece of shit Melina and Bose end the call to take a quick dinner break. After returning to the hotel, they settle in to have a long call with Bob Seven, Austin, Melina, Bose, and Pichachu, where several troubling topics are brought up. After this conversation, Austin informs Melina that he's going to have to let her go. So, <clears throat> I'll probably, um, we might go you back later and listen to, this is like a 20 minute cut of that call. I think the entire call is two or three minutes. I have the recording. I don't know how much Austin is comfortable releasing or not releasing, so I'd have to check with him. Um, I might come back and we can listen to this or something, but everything else that's being said in this document is going to be substantiated in other ways. So I actually don't need that call at all to prove my case. It's just a nice little bonus meme to throw in there because Bob Seven admits a lot of stupid shit in the duration of that call. Also, we are informed that night by Austin, and you know what? If this is wrong, then Austin can fall on this sword, okay? Because I'm not falling on anybody's sword for this. I'm not falling on any sword for any of this shit, okay? I'm not going to take any of your blame. If you guys are playing dumb fucking games behind the scene, that's your fucking fault, okay? I'm okay being the most hated streamer on this platform because you guys are all too busy brown-nosing each other to call each other out when you're doing stupid fucking shit like this behind the scene. And if that makes me, you know, an asshole, if that makes me confrontational, blah, 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 I don't give a fuck because I would sooner kill myself in a video game than play the stupid fucking games you guys do behind the scenes. My understanding was on the night of the third... My understanding was that Bob Seven was fired. 
This is them setting up the conversation. Hmm. Melina's concerned that if Bob Seven has time to prepare, that he's going to spit up more lies. Um, however, they have the conversation. After the conversation, Austin says, thank you. I'll be handling it. Melina says, what do you think you'll do? Austin says, I'm going to have to let him go. I'll call you guys after. This was on the night of the third. I thought that Bob Seven had already lost his job. Me going public was not a goal to crush him, was not a goal to get rid of his employment. It wasn't a goal to cancel him. I didn't bring up any of these initial sexual assault allegations or the nude leaking, and I didn't bring up anything related to his job. I just brought up social shit that he fucked with me on. And you know what? Truly, on that first day, I didn't really care that much. I just wanted to stop people from talking shit about me. But now I care. Destiny has gone live. <clears throat> At this point, now... We're almost to the end of the timeline, okay? Now that I've shown you logs, audio clips, parts of the story, maybe you can empathize with my mind a little bit more, okay? For why I decided to stream. Why did you stream, Destiny? At this point, I'm getting information that Bob Seven has not only spoken about a ton of negative personal information with my fiance, Melina, my ex-girlfriend and one of my closest friends, Arisan, a new but close friend I'd made, Bose, and one of my closest stream friends, Pichachu, I also find out that he is sharing lies about me concerning Bella with Pichachu, Melina, Bose, Ophelia, and Redacted One. Two of these people aren't even people that I'm really friends with. My understanding is that Bob Seven has already been let go by Austin from his job. I've already seen that message. So the only potential damage that could happen at this point is social damage. I feel as though a lot of my social life, both what I can see and most likely what I cannot see, is under attack due to both malicious and false claims Bob Seven is spreading. So I decided to have a stream where I spell out everything Bob Seven has done in order to establish a public record that he is both not credible and sleazy. I allude to larger allegations in this video, those allegations being the pressuring of Ophelia to allow him to fly to Canada and fuck Pichachu and her under the guise of being drunk while simultaneously shit-talking her behind her back, and the screen-sharing of nude pictures of Melina and Redacted One to Bows while also shitting on Melina and Bows. But I decided not to share these things because my main issue with him is not employment-related, but rather socially-related. I also wanted to avoid dragging the girls involved in this, and I didn't honestly think he'd try to defend himself publicly when the things he'd done wrong are so clearly laid out. I fucked up when I made the vague nuke things. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned those at all, and I should have just let him walk into it and then fucking dropped it. Um, I really didn't think he would have the confidence, the audacity, to put together some haphazard, year one, shit-ass 39-page doc with 500 fucking pictures in it to try to make some bullshit story up that I can so clearly disprove with a handful of screenshots and audio recordings. I take responsible for the vagueness of my initial threat, but I do believe that these are relatively life-destroying rev um, um, revelations, given that he is literally pressuring young girls that are going on to fucking Austin's show for nudes, telling him that he's going to flat and fuck them. Well, I don't know if the nudes thing happened. Other people for nudes. Um, telling them that he's going to flat and fuck other streamers and them, all while being a producer of Austin's show. And then also the screen sharing of other nudes to other girls. Now, we haven't gotten very specifically into those two claims yet. We're halfway through the document. Are we going to substantiate any of that? Oof. Who knows? I don't I shouldn't say young girls, actually. She's probably in her, she's like 21 or something, but. <clears throat> I have laid out my entire timeline. This, so far, absent this, is what my first stream should have been. It's possible that after I did this for my first stream, maybe Bob Seven would have fucked off and crawled away or slithered away more accurately, like the little snake fuck he is. But maybe I was a little too vague. Maybe I was a little bit too confident in myself. Maybe I overestimated Bob Seven's intelligence in assuming there's no way this motherfucker is going to try to come back, right, um, on me publicly. I figured he'd already lost his job, so no amount of, like, me blowing him up on fucking social media or on Twitch is going to, like, have any negative impacts on him. This is, this so far should have been my first stream, okay? This is the, up here so far is the New Testament destiny, okay? This is the one that doesn't care. Now we're going to get into more of the serious allegations, okay? Sins of the Father, words that kill. I've done my original timeline. Now we're going to talk about the specific ills that I think Bob Seven has committed, and we'll see. It'll be up to you to figure out if I've adequately demonstrated those ills. Betrayal one, Melina. 
One of the first social sins committed in this ordeal was the breaking of trust between Bob Seven and Molina. Molina confided in Bob Seven a great deal, both about personal problems related to our relationship and, by extension of that, personal stories related to me. Bob Seven took it upon himself to divulge almost every secret or personal story Molina had shared with him to a new crush, Bose, who ostensibly hated Molina due to Bob Seven's conversations. It was incredibly inappropriate of him to breach her trust in order to win the affections of a new girl. While no one external to my personal circle of friends will or should care much about this particular breach of trust, it's something that greatly troubles me, and I feel her suffering is worth mentioning in this, especially given the great deal of personal messages that Bob Seven chose to release without consulting her first. He seems to never care when being confronted about sharing the logs of others, and admits to it as much that he has lost faith in her as a human. It's worth noting how difficult it was in the past to get logs from Bob Seven because, even when Melina others... And even when Molina and him were on good terms, he constantly expressed worry or fear about sharing logs with others. I didn't get a log of that. If he denies it, I can find it. But Bob Seven, when, we, when I was doing my initial investigation to figure out who was lying behind the scenes, Bob Seven is constantly saying things like, I never share logs. I don't like to share logs with anybody. I'll never share logs with anybody. But still, like, you're just like doing it without even asking me about it or anything. And you've always been like, oh yeah, I have to ask about like sharing a log and stuff like that. And I know that you shared so much without asking me. I know you have. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that happened for sure. Yeah. I mean, Why I, did you do that? I was, yeah. Why did I do that? Because mm -hmm. I was questioning you as a friend, as a human. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I, I didn't I didn't have faith in you. I, I really, like, there, there was a point where I was trying to question, like, man, is, is everybody crazy in this situation? Um, and it was really tough for me to figure out. And that's part of the reason that I spoke to Frank about it. And it's part of the reason I took Bose about it, because I wanted a better idea, because you're a person that I do like speaking to. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to like have this this negative impression of you. Yeah. What about so. sharing logs with heiress to Bose? What about that? What? Yeah. What about oh, that? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't give a shit about that. Okay. What the fuck. Yeah. No. What the hell? You know, I, I, I was like. But I, do you understand? Like, do you understand? Like, if you're doing these things so incredibly easy. Do you think that that makes me think like, wait a minute, I wonder how many people he talks and shares things with? I'm really curious about that. Do you understand why that maybe like makes me think a little bit? Why don't, why, why don't you just ask the people? Again, establishing the same kind of pattern of Weasley fuck ways that he talks to people. <clears throat> this sin is whatever. I'm including it here because I love Melina and because one of the troubling things for me is that over the past like month, she's been incredibly distraught over this because she considered Bob Seven a close friend and he's basically just completely and totally discarded her. Um, if for no other reason, I feel like her pain should be included in this because goddamn, she got fucked hard in all of this. And at the climax of this, Bob Seven basically dumps hundreds of fucking screenshots of incredibly intimate conversations that she had with somebody that she thought she could trust. So, it's not really a, a, a big like, oh, he should be canceled or Destiny should leak this. It's something that like I'm going to bring up now that we're talking about everything. Screen sharing of nudes. On the night of November 15th, Melina and Redacted One were in a personal call with Bob Seven. During this call, Bob Seven pressured Redacted One while she was on video to post nude pictures of herself despite her not being comfortable posting pictures of this nature. After the conversation, Bob Seven hops into a call with Bose, where he screen shares the conversation and reveals the nude pictures posted in the call. Bose later reveals to Melina in their conversation on January 2nd that she saw both the conversation and the nude pictures posted, and further provides an explicit detail of the nude pictures in a later conversation on the 3rd with Austin listening. Checking through Bose's call history with Bob Seven, there is also evidence, so I went through and I looked through the logs to see what was going on. There is evidence that immediately after we had finished streaming and uh, Melina and um, Redacted One and Bob had finished talking, Bob Seven does have a call. He's talking about the call up here, and then he has a call with Bose. This is where he shared the nudes. It was during one of these two conversations where he screen shared the nudes as he was going over the conversation with Bose. Bose also took screenshots of previous screen shares in the past, confirming to me that Bob Seven indeed made it a habit of screen sharing conversations he'd had with other people. So... Bose realized like later on, like, holy shit, like Bob Seven fucking screen shares everything. So she's like taking screenshots sometimes of like, this is where like Bob Seven is literally screen sharing his fucking Discord with me to show that he does in fact do this very often. Um, this is him screen sharing a conversation between him and Melina where, he, where she's saying that everything that we say behind the scenes is getting spread around. Bob Seven way of speaking around this while talking to Austin is to claim that I, on a night while I was streaming, 
left my stream to run into the bathroom, look at the conversation between Redacted One, Melina, and Bob Seven, memorize the nude photo, then run and tell Bose exactly what the pictures were, despite the fact that I had zero incentive to do this and can produce our entire logs for that night, showing no such communication actually took place. I just got it a bit ago. It's fun. Can't get away. This is just, this is our log for that night. And then here is November 16th here. I never had a call or conversation with Bose about any of these nudes ever. And... Melina and I were also having an argument that night over whether or not Bob Seven was manipulating friends, and Melina left the group chat immediately once the conversation was finished, so it would have been impossible for me to retrieve that conversation on my own. Now, Casey Tron has come forward publicly to talk shit about what Bob has told her, saying that, well, Destiny has access to all of Melina's calls. Melina leaves conversations immediately after those conversations happen. There is no way for me to retrieve those messages. And what's more, while they were having this conversation that night, me and Melina were having a big fight over Bob Seven and over whether or not um, I believe I trust his judgment. Oh, because they're having a call with their friend and the other friend, the redacted one is saying like, oh, well, maybe Bob Seven is pretty trustworthy, blah, 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 blah. The idea that I would walk into their room, look at the nudes while they're having this conversation, while me and Melina are fighting and then describe those to Bose later is an absolutely absurd story. Um, I'm kicking, oh, <clears throat> Bob Seven later in the conversation with Austin, it sucks I bring this up because he was in the earlier 20 minute recording, admits to pressuring Redacted One to share nude pictures in that conversation. And furthermore, Erica, uh, Bose, in the conversation with Austin, describes an explicit detail of one of those pictures that even Melina didn't know that she knew, proving that she did in fact see those pictures. Now, again, as I said, Bob Seven way of trying to talk out of this is hilariously convoluted, but it is an absolutely absurd story. Um, wait, hold on. Oh, fuck. I wonder if that... I didn't listen to that 20-minute recording, so I, I might be referencing something in that recording. Hold on. Because um, we should listen to him try to talk around that if we can. Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Oh, fuck. Um, it's I'm not logged into my like other account. Eh, we can go back and we can listen to that when we're done with this. But he admits all. No, actually, wait. I don't want to say that he admits it. I want I want you to hear him admit it. Actually, no, I do want you to hear that. So give me one second. I'm going to play it on my other computer. One second. <clears throat> what happened? You were the one pushing. So this is a conversation about that person whose nudes were initially leaked um, that Bob Seven showed Bose. Listen to how he tries to talk his way out of this. Pushing for what happened. You were the one pushing for what happened. That's, if you're saying that it was sorry. weird. If, if you want to say if I push, like yeah, like is that, that wait, you push, like, you push, you push, do what? If you want to, to frame it that like I was like oh yeah, let's see, you know, like I wanted to see a picture of her, like yes, like, in that context, yes, 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 yeah. yeah. And you pushed it. Uh, what, what do you mean? Like we, we talked about. Why do you why do you say this. why do you say that guy got really weird and like yeah I pushed to send pictures. Okay. Did you push <laughs> to send the naked photos because you told me that and Melina were just being sexually open and that they is, just decided is, to is, start sending pictures that is, that and is you. That is hundred percent the honest framing, but it eventually got to a point where I egged on. That is the honest framing. So that Melina, is that accurate? With, but 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 but. I just want to say that it, it really is the case that that uh, th those pictures were, were never, ever captured by me. And they were mm -hmm. not screen but like, but yeah, but One thing that he's going to say over and over again is um, those were never captured by me. I didn't save those. I don't know if he's trying to talk around screen sharing, but he will say this every single time. I never saved them. I never captured them. I never said he will say that over and over and over again. But, but, but how, did, how did Bose know about that then? Yeah, because I like, told her about the situation. But like, why? Yeah, exactly. But you told her about it, and you you showed her. How did I know about the picture of Melina where Steve was holding her boobs? 
how does I actually I haven't even I haven't heard you say that. Okay, yeah, but that yeah, was yeah, in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, it was there. So, yeah, yeah, it was there. The weird thing is, is that Bo seems to know specific details yeah. about what the nudes look like. Yep. Yes. Um, oh, and... Okay, this is literally this. Okay, now he's fucked, right? So what what does Bob do when he's fucked? There's two paths for the Bob Seven to take. If it's a small issue, he'll own the lie and immediately move to the next thing after being caught, because this is what he does. So he'll own the lie and move on to it, or he will invent another story if the lie is too big to own. If so, he can admit here, okay, sure, I pressured somebody to share news, fine, sure, okay, but I didn't, I didn't screenshot, I didn't, well, I didn't save them, I didn't save them, I didn't screen them, right? He can own the first lie so that he can try to get away with the second lie, but he can't, he can't own that second lie. So what does he do? Well, let's listen to the fantastic story that Bob Seven weaves to explain how the fuck does Bose have specific details about nude pictures shared in that call. This is why I actually, I genuinely think that that Bose is is intentionally lying, especially with the framing of the No, thing. because I've I'm never showed her, that's, I've never showed her these that's, pictures. That's more than one. Can you fucking yeah, speak? Yes, I think if Bob just took a second to speak, to explain himself. Destiny sees all of your logs, all of them. And you know that. <laughs> yes. So... I think, I genuinely think, with some of these things, this is, this is like literally, you, there's clips of Destiny talking about, okay, like now we have the half truth, you know, we have the truth. In the One thing that I learned in this Austin call is that Bob Seven has actually been preparing his like manifesto against me for weeks. That's the actual conspiracy that's going on, which is kind of funny for Projector Andy to do, because in the course of this conversation, he actually plays that audio clip of me on Pokemon stream. Or, or, or me talking about Pokemon, the thing about like, oh, like you tell half truths. He actually plays that in this conversation. He has it like fucking loaded and ready to go. So he's already been thinking up a potential leak later. Um, man, wouldn't it be crazy if Bob Seven himself was actually predicting some of the things that would happen and was getting ahead of them? It would be crazy if, um, it would just be insane if we had stories of that happening again in the, in, in the rest of this document. Oh my goodness. What was the date of this call? This call is happening on the night of the 3rd. And then you hit him with the big like, this is the big fucking lie, okay? This is something that I genuinely think that both you and Destiny are working together, and I think you know exactly when you're fucking lying in this, because I never show you those pictures. So you think that I all four of us are lying, but you're telling no, the truth. I, Destiny has access to those pictures, and Melina knows that. So, oh, so, you, so you're saying that you didn't screen share it. You're saying yes, that Destiny yes, showed it to me. Yes. Wait, you think, think you think that he, that why do you think, why would, why would, what? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm crazy, yeah, sure. Bob, 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 he, Bob, could, Bob, then, but he why? could never, ever, ever, he never saw that conversation because that was in a group call, and I left the group right after that call, so there's no way that he could even see that I sent those pictures. So you're trying to say he does not have access to your Discord at all? You screen not, not to that conversation, not that, not that conversation, because I left the group right after. I've seen Melina do that before, where we're in like a group call, and then we'll like talk. She did that once with us, and then right after she'll leave. Um, so I like Steve doesn't have I mean. access to those. Mm -hmm. So Bob, you know. just lied, and you came no, up with I an excuse to weasel lie. yourself out I of it, swear, and then when that excuse I swear on everything so in my life that you, uh, Bose, I know you're fucking lying, dude. I know you're lying. How, you just know this doesn't happen. This is fictional. You're never ever. I, I get it. I get it. You you guys are into manipulation. I get it. You're into true crime, dude. You're looking to take me down. This is really cool. What it's a really the cool thing? You're trying to act like I've been, you know, inappropriate with the girls is insane. Because I barely even felt comfortable flirting. Like, is is probably like the only person that I flirted with besides those. And I barely felt comfortable flirting. Yes, I I I I, I really think that I mishandled. That was a. Like I like Peach could speak to this. I, I've never flirted with her. Like I, I've never inappropriate with the girls, ever. But like it made me feel a little bit weird because I had heard from some people that you had said like, oh, I want to have like a threesome with like Bose and Melina or you told a f I want to fuck you and I want to fuck Peach. And then I was like, wait, he like kept going and said that this conversation was weird and something crazy happened. And then I was like, I got really curious and I was like, what the fuck? Tell me, tell me. And then he was like, all right, I'll tell you if you promise I can stay at your house in L.A. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was weird. Yeah, yeah that, and that, I that, really that weird. weird. Yeah, so again, he'll own the small thing so that he can move on to, to lie about the bigger thing. 
Yeah, Frank coming out was weird, and I admit to that. That that's weird. Okay, so so there's okay. so so I'm happy you're starting true. to see some. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. It's sure. still that you're saying that we did something like that to Bose is just like so incredibly it, like private. I don't know because you know how is so sensitive and like so private about things, and that you just like shared that with Bose, for it's just like yeah, no, it's I, really I, strange. Initial... So, yeah, so basically, I, I kind of like... So you, you, could, you could say that my initial framing, I did not really include. Like, mm -hmm. I mainly focused on, like, Melina sharing pictures, and I didn't really include But then eventually down the line, I admitted that, that I was on something. Yeah, but it's still, like, the way that you were, like, sharing information. I've told you so many things, because I saw you as a very, very close friend. I started venting to you so much about yeah, so yeah, many yeah, private yeah. things. And yeah. you just spill the beans to so many yeah, people. Yeah, if, if you if you want to say that your your trust was broken, of that, that that Completely. situation happening. Completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know for sure. To so okay. many people. I, but there there was there was points where there there was one situation where uh, I was really mad at Melina. So like, yeah, I. I you can you can uh, check if you still in. Describe some yes. things that were yes. in these nude photos mm -hmm. that I don't know how she would have known otherwise. Mm -hmm. Did you just oh, because Destiny has fucking access to Melina's Discord. No, but I'm time. not I'm not in that group but anymore. Go like check. You, you can you can go check what time I le no, left the group as well. You're, you're, you're trying to tell me that there's no possible way that he could have seen that conversation going on. No, he did not see it because I always okay. leave groups because I get super annoyed by group calls. And, and there's like you're that. telling me that there's no way there is no way thing. nope okay why would i no, lie I, why why would you lie give you have incentive to lie what the fuck wait but why would melina have an incentive to lie okay so well i, I don't i don't get it can you explain when, when, when does destiny have access to your discord and when does he not i mean if i leave a group then he doesn't have access to the group i don't have access to the group anymore yes but there's, there's no way you could honestly tell me that he could not have been following along with that conversation as it was happening. He was streaming at the same time. Okay. Um, I don't know if I posted this, but I went back and I checked and I was streaming that night. I have the whole video of me streaming. But like, there's two times where I get up and go to the bathroom, but like, I have the whole video of me streaming that night. Yeah, he was streaming. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask again, is there any possible way no. that he could have, you, are, you, are you being honest? Yes, no way. I will swear on every fucking family member, I will swear on anything you want, that I did never save those pictures of that. I'm not saying, I I'm never said that you saved them. Share them, you screen share them. I never said that you saved them. That didn't fucking happen, you didn't know that it didn't fucking happen, dude. And that's, you, you, you know, you know, Bose. I'm sure, I'm sure that Steve was a part of this. I don't know for a fact, but I would bet money on it that Steve was... He's like, been you know, so just, not interested in this, dude. He has not okay. showed any interest in this. Okay. No. I didn't give a fuck about any of this. I was on two hours of sleep a night. I was not fucking in this world. I stopped in every like five minutes maybe or like every now and then I stopped for five or ten minutes and listened to their fucking calls or whatever. But like, dude, I was getting no fucking sleep and I was like fucking doing my Georgia shit. I, I would, so, I would, no. I, I don't know. I can't say for a fact, but Steven doesn't sound like he'd be interested in this very much. I, I would bet mm -hmm. my life that this was a collaborative effort between no. Destiny and Bose. I no, because here's the thing also. This would have never come, like, gone down if I didn't message her. And nothing yeah. would have happened. So it doesn't make sense. It's not like she manipulated me to like go also keep in mind bob was doing everything he could to keep erica and melina from, to keep bose and melina from talking to each other because he sent that huge nasty log to peach the day before and then told peach to send it to melina talk to her like it's that's just like too insane i was so the one live i live was the one Alex. walking up to her saying hey do you want to chat also and then when okay. we started chatting we realized there was so many things that was incredibly crazy that came have, from have you ever, and mm. have I ever warned you like hey don't talk to Bose like before this weekend was I no but you that? you really made and now he's gonna do things like well have I ever explicitly told you that you shouldn't do this because he's so good everything he says in text has is reeks of plausible deniability every single thing he is so 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 good at trying to talk his way out of situations except when I get to talk to him because I do this fucking debate shit all day so I can hear these strategies coming from a fucking mile away. And if you just let him talk for more than five minutes, he will always trap himself because he's lying about everything that he says. I think at the end of this recording, I think I actually walk into the room and then I listen to him talk for a while and then I like ask him a few questions. And it's really obvious that he's just lying out his ass.
made sure to like that we would not think good about each yeah. other and that then like that we would never crazy. you never thought that we would ever chat with each other you never thought okay. that would happen yeah but like the thing that like there's two versions of reality that could have happened it could be that you didn't screen specifically with that that you didn't screen share the nude that that never happened and that instead what happened was that while Steven was streaming he went into Melina's room took her laptop in front of her um went and like saw the nude or saved the nude and then kept those details in his mind or saved it and had it and then now when Bose was like hey I'm really upset about Bob Steven was like hey you know what you should do you should pretend like he screen shared this nude with you and shared it to you um but, okay, why don't why actually why don't you think that's something that he's capable of why don't you think listen to how crazy the story he has to weave for like Erica to know what the fuck these nudes were that I was like either peeking in on their conversation while streaming or I ran into the room while me and Melina were fighting, saw the nude, memorized it, told Erica about it later so that she could like, imagine how crazy, like he's starting to concoct an amazing conspiracy. And all of this is happening back when me and Erica's friendship is like deteriorating because of Bob Seven and me and Melina are having a fight. Why would she let me in here? Thanks, that. I, because I it's too, it's don't. just too much. It's, I don't know. It's just. Can we, can, we, can we watch a clip together? Let me screen share. Wait, I, can't I wish I was it. like. I wasn't in the room for this part of the call. This blows my mind. He had this ready to go. Something else you notice a lot throughout a lot of Bob's talking. I know that he sounds convincing, but like 95% of what he says is based on character assassinating of me. Like, Destiny's abusive. Destiny's a sociopath. Blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, like, I can be a pretty cold motherfucker. And yeah, you know, me and Melina have problems, but I don't think I fucked up at all in this. I'm not running around, screen sharing people's nudes, calling people ugly behind their backs while telling them I want to fuck them because they're like trying to go up on shows that I'm like a producer of, or like like telling horrible things to like 50 different fucking people to make them all fucking hate each other. Like, it's crazy that he accuses me of being associated with so much of this. And all I'm doing throughout 90% of what we've talked about so far, I just want to fucking stream and play games, okay? I just want to stream and do my business shit. I don't want to fucking mess around with all this shit in the background. But he projects so much insanity onto me. Well, he's the one behind the scenes doing all this insane fucking shit. I wish I was in my early 20s again. This shit is crazy. No, I don't. We're past this. We've grown past this. But fuck, this is like, she's on like some death note level shit, dude. This must have been, maybe she might not be as fucked in the head as I am. This would be very exciting to gather all the information, to get all of your ducks in a row, to know that you were about to fire off like three or four massive fucking lies, but you know that you have a few truths bundled with it to give it credibility. You know that the credibility of the other person is going to be destroyed, and you've gotten a whole bunch of people to corroborate your view behind the scenes with the things that are true, so it's going to make the false statement seem even more credible. There's just like, there's so much work going into this. He had this ready to go on that night, so he was already preparing a manifesto in advance. How crazy is that? This shit was fucking bookmarked. This is like the anti-Fed manifesto that is being prepared and launched. And it was, oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, from watching that, can you not understand that that's exactly what fucking is happening? Um, the thing is though, that for him to even get access to the to be able to tell. Which is very plausible. We know that he has access. And again, like he said- Access on Melina's laptop, not on his computer that he was streaming on. And he would have to like go onto Melina's laptop while she was there mm -hmm. to see. So Melina would also have to be wrapped up in this somehow yeah. about like lying and covering And I up. know, I know, no. yeah. I mean, you, you can't speak with a guarantee saying that, they, that that's an impossible thing that he could have had- no, But I know, but I was I there, know, like- I know. So, like, I know, but like, I'm like, not saying that there's not a one percent chance that this could have happened. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but rather even that, would. like, oh. it, it would take much more of a stretch, Bob, than just like it would take. You have to admit that it would take much more like mental gymnastics to think about all the things that would have to be, all of the ducks that would have to be in a row for that to happen. Versus, you, you, and then like and, wait for and, a moment like, like this. Speaking honestly, with also hearing all the things that I said, you. Can you speak honestly and say that this is something that he's not like, can you, can you speak to me and say, you don't think he's capable of this? This is literally the dream defense. Like, okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not asking you if he did it. I'm just trying to get you over to like, it's possible. Okay, it's possible. I'm just trying to get you to, it's possible. Okay. 
Is it possible that Destiny has like reflective mirrors on the wall that would allow him to turn back and see Melina's laptop screen, even though, and to, for him to see dudes and then describe them later to fuck? Is it possible? Maybe it's possible. I I don't think that that's what he did. I okay. Yeah. Well, I Can we I have the clip again. Like that that literally is it, like explains word for word what happened. Like let's launch off three big lies, and you have all the truth scattered up, and now you're cooperating with people. I you, really. That is exactly what happened. There is a group of girls that were cooperated. I mean, I know, like, I know that this is, like, completely impossible. Yes, I, yeah. I, I, I know that you have faith in your lover. I get it. No, it's Can it's I, just, like, I, I know it's completely impossible because I was there and he was streaming. Like, I know that. I hear him from you, the other room, like... These, these photos that I'm saving, I told her... Notice how he phrases it again, always. These photos I'm saving. I'm saving, the, you're saying I'm saving photos? He always goes back, he'll always phrase it that way. Always the plausible deniability. So that if he does get caught, if some way he can say, well, okay, okay. I didn't say I was screen sharing, I just meant I didn't save him. Always the plausible deniability. I was not gonna save it, and I know that I didn't do that. So now, all I'm left with is questioning how the fuck did this happen? I think it was a complicated situation. I think that it was really unfortunate. I, I do regret how I handled that, of course. Oh. But this this idea this this idea that like I, I've been inappropriate in like in that way is like such a fucking joke. Because like now he says it's a joke that he's inappropriate when he already admitted ten minutes earlier that he was pressuring Redacted One to post a nudes that she was uncomfortable posting. Now he's saying that it was just a joke. It, it really is the case too. Like um, I don't know. As I said, like I, I've, I've I really haven't been sexual with like. Like, like, anyway, like that, that's something that, I, like, genuinely since breaking up with my girlfriend, I've been very uncomfortable in that whole regard. And I mean, know, you I, admitted I, that you were pushing to send the pictures. <laughs> you admitted that, so you have been sexual. That's yeah, not but, true. Uh, she, I, okay, and I just want to be really clear with that. I did not pressure her at all to send the first photo. But what I did say is, like, you know, uh, that, that I, I, I expressed interest in seeing more in her i mean i was and there and you were being a bit pushy yes you well, were. We literally talked about that the following day and mm -hmm. we went over it and resolved it to make sure that there he does this a lot by the way we went over it the next day and we resolved everything because he's very 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 good at talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one and convincing them that nothing that was done was wrong which is what i suspect has probably happened to ophelia bear behind the scenes there's no negative feelings because it's it's something that like she again also Again, you gotta catch these, these are so hard. Why did you feel the need to talk to her the next day to resolve things if you didn't feel like you'd actually done anything wrong? Why would you message somebody the next day after saying you didn't do anything, you didn't pressure for anything? Why would you message them, message them the next day to clear things up if you felt like you hadn't actually done anything? Again, reaching, 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 reaching. It's always a reach, it's always the next lie. And if you're not listening very carefully, it sounds pretty convincing. But like, if you listen, you take a moment, you're like, wait, why would you do this and this at the same time? There's always another lie to pivot to. And like, she's expressed interest in being sexual with me. And even after that day, we still potentially, you know, like, uh, explore that where, like, you know, I, I take the one line and it, like, it, it would have to, like, they're, they're and again, as he's inventing a new lie, well, this might be true, but if this is true, it contradicts what he said earlier to this, to saying, I had no sexual uh, experiences or I didn't have any sexual interest after I broke up with my last girlfriend. Well, which one is it? Well, did you try to pursue sexual relationships with a person or did you not have any interest? It's, it's always contradiction after contradiction. There's definitely a current line of, of me saying something sexual to her. Booze seemed to have a lot of proof of stuff in general it's really interesting that the thing main things that she doesn't have proof for is the biggest allegations like fuck off dude fuck that i think when she was describing to me the new thing with so that sometimes when you guys screen shared that you would say like put your hands up like you'd be on webcam you'd be like hands up so that you knew that you weren't she wasn't like saving stuff and this she said that you made her do that for the so this that's why she didn't have proof for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is fictional. Because there was also a situation where Bose screenshotted while I was screen sharing with her, and she scared her screen, and I saw that, and I was like, what the fuck? He's like, without Doug Ward. That, okay, so I enter, the, I enter the room now, but I'm talking about, I think, Doug on my phone or whatever, but this is where I think I come in.
Not the reason that everyone hates me is because the allegation of the nude thing, which is purely fictional. Outside of that, I don't think that these people have problems with me. That's the like Okay, wait, wait, wait. But that is clearly not true. Because as soon as Melina and Erica started talking, they both realized that they fucking hated you before any mention of any nude came up. That is yeah, true. No, I, also, Stephen, he thinks I, I, that you he thinks that you somehow like got access to <laughs> nudes and then told both what they looked like so that <laughs> He could like f pretend like he screen shared them somehow. The only like possible that. way that I could ever have access to <laughs> Melina nudes, and I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I look through Melina's shit to see if anybody's like, I don't think any I has <laughs> sent you nudes before. No, never. Okay, then I, I there's no way that I've seen fuck. How the f that she didn't. This the whole premise of it is that okay. she did. What happened was they were no the because they were in a group call. It was a group night chat while you were streaming mm -hmm. and. It was at that point, and then right after the call, um, Melina left the group so that she she wouldn't even on her end have access to it. So during your stream, you would have had to go to Melina's laptop, see the nude, either register details about During it, the time I had the call. All I'm saying is that I know for a fact that I've never saved those pictures and shown it to someone. That's it all was a screen. Saved. Never saved them. Again, the same verbiage. Yeah. I know. It was yeah. like th through like a screen yeah. share. It was not saved pictures. It was screen and, share. And, and he that likes that to bring up saving all the time. Uh -huh. But it's a screen yeah. share. For, okay, listen, I'm only catching pieces of this, but like it all fits into stuff I understand, so tell me if I'm wrong. But it sounds to me like Bose's problem is that you've presented her to other people as being like some deranged fucking lunatic. Like, Bose, for some crazy reason, fucking hates Melina. Meanwhile, you're telling Bose all this horrible fucking shit about Melina and Mai's relationship, and Bose is coming to me saying that like, because Bose even told me like, I don't respect your relationship between you and Melina. Like, Melina seems like a pretty manipulative person eventually. And I'm like, damn, I guess Bob is telling yeah. some crazy shit. I, I generally, I don't, I don't think that I've said anything to Bose for her to think that she's manipulative. If anything, I've said the opposite. I've said, like, mean stuff about Melina in terms well, of... Well, sure. Then, at the, I mean, I guess at that point, it's up to, like, a third party's, like, judgment. I don't know how much Austin knows yeah. Bose. I know Erica pretty well. Like, I think she's, like, I've generally... for years. So it doesn't seem like you're trying to protect anybody. It seems like you're always just kind of looking out for yourself, and you'll throw whoever under the bus you need to in order to, like, protect your own interests. You didn't give a fuck about Melina and me until you thought that I was getting upset at you for shit that you'd said uh, to, <laughs> about me and Erica. Like... I don't think I don't think you can sell that story to me. I mean, I was literally hoping that that Bose would be a force for good in, in helping Molina. I was very wrong. I was very, very, very wrong. You thought that Bose would be a force for good in helping Molina when you're telling Bose that Molina won't let you two stream together? How the fuck is Bose <laughs> supposed to like Molina then? Wait, wait, what do you mean? That never, wait. You absolutely, hold on, careful, because the one fucking log that you sent to Melina between you and Bose having a conversation, this was part of my little investigation, was Bose asking you if it was okay that you guys had done anything together because Melina might get upset. So clearly you fucking told Bose that you and Melina, or that Melina told you not to stream with her. How could Bose have a positive impression of Melina or want to help Melina when you're feeding her all this fucking crazy shit about her? And then when you're throwing Melina under the bus, telling her things like Melina's not funny, Melina's dumb, Melina's immature. Man, dude, I build up Melina so much much and I was so disappointed and I get actually I have logs even if I go back far enough where Bose is like oh man like I don't know about Melina like your guys relationship seems fucked like she seems really immature Bob was telling me that she's stupid Bob was telling me that he doesn't like her like how the fuck is she gonna have a positive impression of Melina after that that, is, that was like there, there's there's logs of uh me asking like be honest Bose like have, have I given you uh a negative impression of Melina and if so how because like it really was my intention and she had said like a big part of it was that she was a person that was like, you know, super hot, interested in me, and that I wasn't interested in her. So she, she like really questioned like, man, if Bob isn't interested. Wait, like, what? Jesus. What do you mean? Well, I don't follow that at all. Wait. So uh, I just, okay, listening to this again, I just understood now what Bob was trying to say. <laughs> I didn't even catch this story the first time. I truly didn't understand. Bob was trying to say that if Eric and him are friends, and Bob's not interested in Melina, who's really hot, then I guess Melina must be a really shitty person. Because how the fuck else couldn't Bob be interested in her? What, a, un, what an unbelievable story. Holy shit. I didn't, even, I didn't even catch that at the time. I don't know if he re-explains it to me. I understand it or not. Wait, what? Bo's, a big reason for Bose having a negative uh, opinion of Melina. Melina off the start was me saying to Bose, like, yeah, I'm not, like, sexually interested because, like, you know, said that she's made advances on me and uh, that... I mean, there was points where I... I, I this, I don't even... This, we're reaching, like, super hard right now. So, you think Bose... You're telling... The story you're trying to tell me... 
Well, wait, wait, oh, I'm curious. Well, we can present this to, to, to Raj or, or to Austin. I'm sorry. Like, so you talked a ton of shit about Molina to Bose, and Bose doesn't like Molina. Or on the flip side, no, no, I, I did not talk a lot. No, no, shit. I'm saying that's my story, and you're saying your story is you told Bose that Molina was hot, but re but you rejected her advances. So somehow that made Bose a person that you just I, talked to for the first time hate Molina. No, no, I'm just telling you, like, my, what my thought process was is just that I, I interacted very honestly with how I felt with everything, and I guess some of that does definitely include negativity. Okay, well, listen, that's fine if you say that now, but this totally contradicts your earlier story where you're like, I don't know why Bose would hate her, because earlier you said that you didn't give very negative impressions, and now you're saying, well, I did, but it's because I was mad at her. Me? I, I genuinely, when I got that log... I, I genuinely was like, how the fuck does Bose think this? Well, but, but wait, wait, you're, okay, so now you're going back to story one. So hold on, we have two different competing stories here. So story one is, wait, wait, so story one is, I never really said that many negative things about Melina. I don't know how Bose could hate her, but story two is, me and Melina were in a really dark spot, so of course I said a bunch of negative stuff, but I shouldn't have said it, I'm sorry. So which one is it? Both. <laughs> you no, know, these are contradictory stories. How can you be surprised then? Wait, wait. Then how can you be surprised when Bose fucking hates Molina when you were in a dark spot and you vented a bunch of negative fucking shit and you talked a ton of shit? I, I fully understand her having a negative uh, opinion of Molina at this point. I feel wait, so does he understand or does he not understand? Do you see what I mean? How if you if, if you, you just have to be like, you have to be listening really carefully and he just is so slimy. He's so good at talking around everything. Oh. I understand. That that is the except like that that is like yeah I I totally own like you know like uh, but but part of it was like Bose kept reassuring me like I don't have a negative you, okay sure what well, so that listen okay I gotta go downstairs okay this might be the case but the problem is that like you're being accused of like nine lies and you're owning like lies one two three four five six seven and eight and you're like but nine I didn't do because like that one was on video yeah I I just don't genuinely don't think that these people had a negative view until Bose said the uh. The nude stuff and this is rough and like also Melina you gotta understand like I almost need help from Steven on this because I'm taking the heat like yeah, Bob's yeah. not coming after you or Peach at all he's, he's full on go on here yeah, yeah yeah he's not doing it on and anyway. like I didn't lie about shit no, I know. <laughs> that sucks and the worst thing is that like even back on the night of the third like Bob had already kind of like started to aim his whole narration at basically destroying Bose's character. Like, that's the entire goal of all of this. And you have to consider that in Erica's position, the only reason she ever went to Austin in the first place, the biggest reason was because of Ophelia's confession that she later on retracted. And like, to be clear, um, I do this shit for a living, so when I hear people like him talk, I can hear the bullshit, but most people won't be able to. Like, he is so good at just spinning story after story after story. There's a reason why there are so many, like, other girls involved in this that just had no fucking idea that, like, Bob Seven is just slimy piece of shit, because he's so good at just lying and lying and lying and lying and lying. Um, and then we see that, like, through to today, like, that narrative is still, like, carried over, like, pretty hard. Like, all of LSF thinks that Bose is this horrible, disgusting, evil, manipulative person. And also another thing is that, and we'll get to this later on regarding Redacted 2's nude leak that um, Bob Seven is showing that uh, Erica fucked up on. Bob Seven has been very careful to conflate those two instances together because he thinks that if he can destroy Erica's reputation about the second nude leak, people will forget about the first one and pretend that they're the same thing. I've even seen comments today on that um, saying that, like, oh, well, we've already proven that the nude leak was fake. Like, Erica Wait a minute. That was a second instance, and we'll get to that. But that was a totally second instance. That has nothing to do with this first one that he almost completely admitted to. He admitted to the pressuring of redacted ones sharing their nudes. He admitted to seeing the nudes, and he admitted to having to apologize to her the next day because he was uh, pressuring her, even though he said he wasn't, which is strange because I don't know why to apologize. The only thing that he is not admitting to is whether or not he screen shared them because that's the, that's the lie that he has to sell. Even though the only way Erica could have known about the existence of those nudes requires some incredibly convoluted story of me sneaking into the room, seeing them, describing them later, because Melina left that group chat immediately once they'd finished talking. I'm sorry, this is really complicated to follow. Um, I'm trying to explain this as clear and concisely as possible, but holy shit, what a tangled web we weave. Jesus fucking Christ. That is, um, <clears throat> this is the screen sharing of nudes. That was this conversation. Um, and then also, just as a refresher, I have logs with Erica for that entire night where we never started a call. I have logs with Melina for that night that shows that we were fighting with each other. And then I have, um, 
And then I have logs for Erica that Bob Seven called her immediately after they finished their call. Right here. <clears throat> he screen shared those nudes with Bose because he's trying to fuck Bose because he wants to get on a good side. And one of the ways to do that is to show nudes of other women. 100% that's what happened. That was nuke one. I didn't explain this initially because I didn't want to drag Bob hard on nude allegations because I knew that would probably fuck up a lot of the remainder of his life on Twitch. And honestly, it was the social shit that bothered me more than anything else because that's what I was personally involved in. But if we're going to run through and drag my name through the mud and character assassinate Bose, then we're going to talk about this stuff. <clears throat> Sin number three, betrayal two. Zintani. Bob Seven initially dragged Zintani's name through the mud to attack my character, falsely claiming that I was blackmailing her, claiming that Zintani was used to add validation to the lies about him being told to the girls. Let's video, listen to this. I went on there right after video I went on there right after my last parent died to talk about trauma and holes people get stuck in after trauma. So after this interaction Destiny literally just is like, hey, look at this shit I have on you that you wouldn't want to get- Okay, the reason, the reason that I'm going over any of this is because he dug into Zintani and Zintani was used to add validation to the lies about me being told to the girls, okay? He was urging Zintani to come forward with a story about me and even potentially tell lies about me, okay? So that is why we are covering any of this. Because, again, on the same day as the pokey fed thing where he talked about that- Oh, sorry, this is really loud because I have the audio boosted. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Um, because I had boosted it because it was before. Sorry. Flip. He reaches out to Zintani, someone that he knows hates me, and starts to threaten her. Okay, that's why this is important. Get out and there. Also, and also, just hold which... on one second. Just people were saying, why? Why are the logs blocked on the last image? Uh, I believe Zintani was taking these, and she was in a she was in a call with someone, and there. Yes. Camera was there. Yeah. So So we blocked their face out. Uh, we tried to block yeah. as many people as possible. Yes. She so said. just we're, so we're crystal clear on what this claim is, Bob Seven is claiming that I am using Zintani to add validation to the lies about him being told by the girls. But this is simply not true. Nothing Zintani said was mentioned to Austin. Austin fired Bob Seven on January 3rd based solely on his inappropriate actions with Ophelia and his screen sharing of nudes from Melina and Redacted One. Nothing about Zintani has anything to do with any of these stories. She is completely and totally unrelated to all of this. Now, a lot of people didn't see the conversation because it was at the end of a like, five-hour stream. But when Bob Seven came on to talk to me, he ends up admitting to and walking back almost everything. So when we talk, notice how quickly he walks back the blackmail claim when confronted in conversation from you blackmailed her for information me to just a general threat. Are you really willing to take not that? Not true. And now you try to say, and you try to say that you want shit talking. Are you really trying to say that you? Are you really trying to say you didn't blackmail Santani? Are you really willing to take? Not over anything related to you. No. Okay. So did you blackmail Santani? Notice how he now he walks it back to like a general threat rather than does this have to do with you? Not over anything related to you. No. Did you blackmail Santani? Sure, but not over anything related to you. But also, Santani is a person that you dug for information on, and also that that this was a girl that was brought in. She wasn't brought in, and I didn't dig for information on her about anything related to any of these issues. <clears throat> Later on, he claims that I didn't actually start blackmailing her until January 6th. I'm blackmailing her for information about... Wait. That I was blackmailing her for information about you. Literally, it starts up and being like, hey, Destiny asked me about this, that's pretty weird. And then at the same log, you could even see, I think Destiny might have threatened me, and I just want to say, if I die on the internet, will you still be my friend? Where is her saying in that conversation that I'm blackmailing her for information about you? Hey, literally, you did not start blackmailing her yet. Clearly, you started blackmailing her on the 6th. After on she reached out to me. So wait. You're telling me, hold on, oh god, I love it when you do this. You're telling me that her logs to you was her complaining that I was blackmailing her about you, but I ain't even blackmailed her yet. 
This is what you do, Bob. And this is why I know that you're lying is because you reach for shit live. You can't, dude, this has been my life for months. You can't try to spin these fucking stories out thin air. I live this fucking shit, dude. This is what I mean when I say half-truths. He's, because he's reaching on the spot. He's trying to think of a way like, well, you hadn't started blackmailing yet. Then how did she message you complaining that I was blackmailing her? And notice that he says it happened on the 6th. He'd already been fired from his job. Why would anything? And I had already done my stream. Is he saying that I blackmailed her after I did my stream on the 4th? Why would I even do that? Where is the proof of that? I released my full logs of, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry. Then he later claims that I didn't actually start blackmailing her till after January 6th from the future, after he was already fired from his job and I had already done the stream. The full logs further show that my dispute with her had absolutely nothing to do with Bob Seven or really even me blackmailing her. Um, I post all of these in here. It's not really worth going over, um, or you can read them later if you want. Basically, she's messaging me. I think she's bothering me. I threatened to repost a video that was posted on YouTube before about her, um, and then she, we like fuck with each other back and forth on this. I was never blackmailing Zintani for any piece of information or for anything like that ever. I should have never owned, because I don't like threaten blackmail somebody. I never blackmailed somebody ever. I should have never owned that and moved to the next part of the conversation. I didn't realize how fixated people would get on that word. Not only did I not blackmail her, she even agrees as much. So yeah, about how Destiny treated me, uh, y yeah, whatever, he threatened me, y bullshit happens all the time, people say mean things, I was being mean to him as well, I was being rude to him as well, and that's embarrassing to show, that I got mad at Destiny and said, you know, mean things, but, you know, I do that sometimes when I'm angry, I, and, and Destiny was just doing the same back, he was not blackmailing me. That is not true. That is spinning something that's not real. Destiny was just being a dick back. There was nothing to be blackmailed out of me. Nothing. So... This idea that I blackmailed her is ridiculous. And for some reason, so much of Bob's story seems to rest on this piece of information when nothing Zintani said had anything to do with why, the f with why Bob Seven got fired. I was not blackmailing Zintani at all in our conversation. Though our talk was heated, with both of us taking shots at each other, my threat to her was that I would simply publish a video that had already been public in the past if she would not stop messaging me. Zintani agrees as much and even begs Bob Seven not to leak her private messages with me. Why would you do this to me? I don't want to be included in this. You send me a long paragraph of an apology, but when I tell you that this document is scaring the shit out of me and that I don't want to be involved, you ignore me. Why? I don't want to be involved in your bull. This entire document is bullshit. This entire document is you airing out people's personal life to try to manipulate out of shit when all you had to do was apologize in private, and now you're putting me on blast. Why? What did I do besides get hurt by you and your drama? Take this shit down and leave me the fuck out of it. You are such a terrible person and friend. I would never do this, and all because you can't say sorry. And this is true. The majority of Bob Seven's first manifesto was just 200 fucking pages of irrelevant personal conversation that he's divulging between him, Melina, and Bose. Please stop going back and forth on this. Bob is one of the worst friends slash people I've ever had. I don't know Destiny, but Bob did what Destiny threatened to do. Bob seems to think this is a game. Even begs Bob Seven not to leave her private messages with me, as these reveal personal things about her that she'd wish to remain private. Ironically enough, she told Bob Seven that he was essentially doing exactly what he accused me of doing to her, make public something that she wished to keep private. Please don't include that screenshot where I talk about my childhood trauma. Please, you don't have my permission to talk about this. Please stop. Stop. You don't need to air my personal life and private things I've told you in order to fix things. No, why? Why would you do this? Oh my God, and you are doing what Destiny threatened to do. Why? The fact that he would air this and then claim that I was trying to do it while he is actually doing it is unfathomable to me. It's almost as sad as all of the fucking dipshits on LSF jumping on this like he was making some kind of good point. Absolutely insane. Not to mention the fact that I don't think I ever even brought up fucking Zintani in any of this until Bob Seven dragged her name out here. I want to be very clear here. Bob Seven is trying to present this story where he's being considerate of the other girls that are being brought out, which is why Ophelia tweeted earlier that she didn't want to be involved in this with a clip that Bob Seven gave her. But clearly, Bob Seven doesn't give a fuck about dragging anybody through the mud because he revealed a great deal of personal information about Melina, about Bose, and about Zintani, and about Pichachu, and about Eris, 
and he never cared about any of that at any stage of the way. In the manifestos themselves, a great deal of information about Molina, about Bose, and about BGG. But for some reason, now all of a sudden, now when he thinks that some truth might be leaked that destroys him, now he's very concerned about the privacy of other women. It's crazy how that works out. <clears throat> that was the Zintani story. This was Sin 3. This is Betrayal of Zintani. Sin 4, the revealing of public nudes. Now, this is going to be one of the hardest ones to speak about because the clip about this is pretty shitty, and we're going to listen to this. I believe this is um, a similar clip to what um, I think... Uh, Bob Seven released an excerpt of this, and this is where Erica supposedly admits to she was the one that asked Bob Seven for um, redacted two's nude pictures. Okay, so I, yeah, I need to start running through my points real fast here. Okay, um, did you ever tell? We can just probably yes or no these. Did you ever tell Frank about the screenshot thing? No. No. Okay. Um, no did you? Okay, today. And did you ever tell? Did you ever tell? <laughs> you sent me her nudes. Uh, I, this is a dishonest framing of this. I'm sorry? This is a dishonest framing of this. Why, okay, and remember, you deleted the photo, but you didn't delete the text above it, so why don't you go ahead and explain? Yeah, sure. I, I, I'd like, actually, I'd like your side first. No, I, I, you just said, okay, you just okay, said okay, this sure. is a dishonest framing. That was my framing. Yeah. Give me your framing. Okay. Sure, sure, we could do this. So, how it went down is that we were talking about the concept of leaked nudes, and one of the things I said was saying, man, like, news leaked, and it really sucked because it made her not want to go on Austin's show. So, to understand what's happening in this conversation, and fuck does he play this well, because Erica comes off as such a piece of shit in this conversation. Bob Seven, in a kind of underhanded way, basically admits to something that he shouldn't be doing, which is he teased the existence of some nude photographs to Erica about somebody that was a regular on Austin's shows, that he only knew about because he was a producer. But notice how he'll walk by that really quick. And once he's teased the existence of those things, he'll go on to say like, well, look, she asked me for it. She asked me for those. That's not my fault. She asked. And that is one of the biggest narratives right now. That got like 600 comments on a clip that basically crucifies Bose as being a huge hypocritical piece of shit. Oh, well, she asked for the nudes. Oh, well, of course she asked for the nudes. Like, what the fuck? She's trying to, she's trying to make Bob fall on that even though she asked. Why the fuck would she ask for nudes of a random fucking person unless Bob Seven had made her aware of the existence of those nudes first? It doesn't make any sense that out of nowhere in a conversation, Bose would randomly be like, oh, hey, um, are there nudes of X? Show me. Of course not. What Bob did, the same way that he did earlier about the piece of Bella information when he was talking to Pichachu, remember when he was like, oh, well, I know something. The same thing that he did earlier when he talked to Melina about that disgusting sex dream. I'll tell you about it later on voice call. Now he's probably done it to Erica in the past. Like, oh, um, man, it sucks that news got leaked. Did you know that like nudes of whoever got leaked, right? Did you hear about that? And then Erica's like, wait, holy shit, who was it? Show me or whatever. Somehow this becomes, he's flipped it so that it's her problem now. Why is she asking? She asked for it. And I'll play the rest of the clip out. But now that you understand the framing of this, now you can understand. And this is why all the preparation going into this is so important. And I love Erica, okay? I love, 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 love Erica, okay? She, these conversations are very difficult for her. And you already heard earlier that she was crying. She's very, like, upset about all of this. And she can get turned around because Bob is so good at it. In her mind, when she owns later on, like, well, yeah, of course I asked you, she doesn't think that's a big deal because the initial problem is the fact that Bob even told her that that content creator had nudes leaked of them already. But somehow, Bob manages to spin the whole story so that, oh, well, look, Erica was asking for him. I had no choice but to send him. As a producer working on Austin's show who made her aware that those nudes existed. Here's the remainder of that two-minute clip. And you this is something that I reassured her, like, hey, we could put any band phrase in the chat. Like, I don't want this something to prevent you. And you popped up, dude. You were like, ooh, can I Google this? Is that weird? Is this weird if I Google this right now? I, I, I asked, I said, is this weird if I Google this right now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then you said, I can't find it. And I said, what do you mean? It's like one Google search away. And then you said, post it and then just delete it after. And that is how that happened. So did I say, wait, so did I, wait, so what do you think I Googled? Like, oh, 
Nasty Nudes, and it just popped up on Google. And my question no, is, no, I pushed, I but no, but my question, my question to you was, did you tell that you sent me naked photos of her and her and her ex boyfriend? And also, I just, I, if you didn't tell her, I did. And I described the photo that you sent to me. I described the photo that I, I asked for. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So I asked. For, okay. Okay. So this is the part where Eric's like, yeah, okay. I asked for them. But the initial problem here isn't whether or not Erica is asking him for nudes of a random person. The problem is that Bob Seven has made another person aware of the existence of some nudes that he only knows about because that other creator is going on Austin shows. And he only knows about this as a producer and he dangled it in front of her. Hey, man, it sucks. Like, didn't you know that, uh, didn't you know that Redacted 2's nudes were leaked? And she's like, wait, what? Show me. And somehow it's twisted so that this is Erica's fault. Now, this is the part of the clip that Bob Seven plays to prove that she's making up lies. And he also tries to tie this one into the first nude leak accusation between Redacted 1 and Melina being shown to uh, Erica because he thinks if he can, his goal goal throughout all of this is that if he can successfully character assassinate Bose, then he's basically won the argument because all he's trying to make all of the accusations line up with her and then he's trying to take my reputation with it but okay no 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 you, let's let's i want to go no 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 wait let me let me finish that point so let's say that i did sessions i'm curious if that is there is that did you ask for them or yeah. not yeah let's say let's say i did ask no, let's, but I, I wait, did you? no i did not ask for did you both did i ask for Yes. Yeah, that's what you, asking. Did you Did you tell me to post it and delete it? Is that something that you told me to do? I don't know. Maybe I did. And this is, and now it looks like, ah, so she, so Erica, Bo's, Erica's Bo's. I keep on Erica's name. So Bo's is the one fucking around. She asked for it. It's her fucking fault. Why the fuck did she ask for those nudes? Why the fuck would she even know that those nudes exist? Why the fuck is a producer on Austin's show telling other fucking people that somebody that goes on Austin's shows have nudes out there of them? Why the fuck would he do this? And then when he dangles it in front of her, as he dangles in front of so many people, why would he be surprised that she asks for it? Now, should Bose have been asking for those nudes? Yeah, probably not. It's probably dumb to do it. But who does the responsibility fall on? Like Bose, a friend of Bob, or Bob Seven, a person that's working as a producer on Austin's show? Okay. 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 Truthfully, truthfully here, I think it's important that we I, we all are as honest as we can. I, you know what? You know what I'm going to say, Bob? I'm going to say that I can't remember that exactly. We should look at, we should take a look at the logs. And Bose I'm is mind say, fucked at this point. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to say, what if I did, Bob? Did you send me and did you tell her that you sent me her naked photos of her and her ex-boyfriend? Let's just say I asked for it. And did you do it? Because she doesn't understand why that's a problem, but she doesn't realize how the framing has changed on it. <clears throat> Bose inquired about these nudes, asking if Bob Seven had a link to them, and Bob Seven quickly posted and deleted the link to said nude pictures upon her request. Bob Seven likes to deflect from this issue by saying that Bose was asking for these pictures, but why was she even aware they existed in the first place? Why is a producer on Austin's show telling some talent that some other talent may have nudes leaked that they wish to remain private? There is also a pattern of this behavior where Bob Seven will bring up something to make the other party interested to encourage them to ask about it, only later to claim that he wasn't the one who brought it up. We've seen him do this with the dreams about Ophelia to Melina and the statement about Bella to Pichachu. Betrayal 3, Ophelia Bear. This is Nuke 2. Bob Seven abused his position as a recruiter on The Austin Show to get closer to Ophelia Bear, a young streamer who had a big crush on him. While simultaneously flirting with her and making advances at her, was telling her several other women behind the scenes that um, he was telling several other women behind the scenes that he found sex dreams with her to be disgusting. This is a clip from Pichachu, how he had a sex dream about her and was disgusted and whatnot, and him telling a separate story about how his friend told him that he only uh, hangs out with pretty girls and he thought Ophelia was an exception because she's ugly, which multiple girls heard that one too. His other flirtatious activity with Ophelia Bear culminated in him making inappropriate sexual comments to her under the guise of being drunk, saying that he would fly out to Canada and fuck another streamer and then her. Pichichu was shocked at the end of this clip because she has absolutely zero sexual relationship whatsoever with Bob Seven, and she was surprised that he'd implied as much. He'd also suggested to Ophelia Bear to make her stream more sexual so that she could be successful. And he was just like, why are you uncomfortable? You need to get fucked, you need to get fucked. And then he just started drinking so much oh, that he was what? just like, um... <laughs> 
I'm gonna come oh. to Toronto and fuck you. And he kept saying that. He was like, do you want me to fuck oh, me fuck you first? Oh. And I was just like, I, I, oh. like, I feel like it's Why? kind of my fault because I didn't shut no, it down. Because I was like, oh, I, I like him. I don't want to tell him no. But then no. it was just like, why the fuck are you telling me you're gonna fuck Peach before me and all this shit? Wait, like, what? Yeah, what? he was... Oh, wait, 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 what? <laughs> No, I mean, he's done the same thing to me. He's like, you need to push it more. You need to make people want to fuck you more on your stream. Put a bed behind you. Wait, this is like so <laughs> weird. Oh I am so shocked about that. Oh my god. Holy shit. Ophelia, do you understand your experience? None of us world? had any idea that these were the claims that she was going to make. Bose originally didn't want to go to Austin until Ophelia expressed concerns that we'll get to later. This is one of the reasons why Bose was so upset that Ophelia had basically released a statement throwing her under the bus, where Ophelia claims, well, all Bob did was make a few sexual jokes about me. That's all he did. He took it a little bit further than that. And even Casey Tron seems to know as much. <clears throat> Big Boss Bose, patriot or villain? Bose's story and the way people have twisted her words and accusations have arguably been the most tragic in all of this, so let's establish some facts for the record. One thing that should be made clear is that one of the largest reasons why Bose wanted to go to Austin was due to Ophelia expressing fear over exposing Bob Seven as he was a producer on The Austin Show. And he was just like, why are you uncomfortable? You need to get fucked. You need to get fucked. And then he just started drinking so much oh, that he was what? just like, um, <laughs> I'm going to come to Toronto and fuck, fuck you. Wait. And he kept Oh, no, wait, fuck. Oh, wait, sorry. I must have clicked the wrong thing. Um, I mean, like, what, what are we supposed to do from here? Because I don't want to just completely, like, disappear because he does do, like, the Austin recruitment, um, especially for, like, Neon Peach. Yeah. He will not. Um, he, to be completely honest, I didn't say anything to Austin myself because I don't like making personal issues having somebody lose their job. You know what I mean? I think that's really mm -hmm. fucked up. But with how bad this is, Austin doesn't need this guy working for him because he. So to be clear, up to this point, the narrative that Bob has sold is that Melina and Bose were setting out for weeks to try to destroy Bob's job. Bose didn't actually approach Austin at all until he heard Ophelia on a call cry about how Bob Seven has mistreated her and then was scared about the fact that Bob Seven still worked on the show. The craziest part about all of this, and one of the reasons why, and I'm going to be totally honest, when I went to put together this manifesto, I was kind of like half expecting that I'm probably going to have to throw Bose under the bus because like, I don't know like if she's acted in the best way throughout all of this. But when I started to like actually compile the audio and then listen through a lot of this shit, it blew my fucking mind. I was like, holy shit. That cringe clip now of Erica throwing Ophelia under the bus, I 1 million percent understand it. Because the only fucking reason she wanted to go to Austin was because Ophelia was on this call complaining that Bob Seven worked for Austin and that her career was going to be fucked, that she wasn't uh, respecting his sexual advances while he was working for Austin. And I think that's the big reason why Bo's lashed out so much at Ophelia when she basically talked to Bob and then ended up releasing a statement on Twitter redacting and recanting every single single thing she said. Someone else is dying. Here. You're good on the shows. You you guys will still be on the shows. And like also, uh, like by the way, yeah, guys, when I said all I said to Austin was that Bob has been telling lies about me. He has no idea how bad it is and his first question to me was Bose should I even hire him he already asked me that shit mm. so no. so up to this point Erica didn't actually say anything to Austin about like firing Bob Seven or not doing anything she was like almost exclusively driven to do this because of Ophelia's confession here I want to be ultra fucking clear here I don't necessarily blame Ophelia for recanting because I know that on this night, now I can't prove this because I don't have logs on Bob Ophelia, but Ophelia later, I'm pretty sure admitted to a, in a call. After this night, um, Ophelia actually um, had like a huge conversation with Bob Seven and mysteriously enough, Ophelia's entire story changed afterwards. Now, my guess is going to be is that Bob Seven is a very good talker and managed to talk her out of every single thing that she'd admitted to on this call. 
And I think it is absolutely fucking insane and disgusting that Casey Tron and Minx are stepping up to defend Bob Seven, who is doing this. And I think that they are just as culpable of Bob Seven here because they've participated in the online character assassination right alongside him to lend credibility to his story. Also, Minx or Casey Tron, I'll get ahead of this. They might try to, um, oh, I should have clipped this. If they want to fight about it earlier, I'll leak the log. But um, there might be like a leak coming from that channel where Erica says something along the lines of like, because she phrased things up. She says something like, oh, like we should host this girl, blah, 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 blah. Like we need to give her hosts or whatever so that she's on the good side. They're going to try to represent that as saying like, oh, look, oh, wait, actually, hold on. Ignore everything I just said because I think I addressed this later on in the document. Um, th but they're going to try to say like, oh, look, that was Bose trying to seduce her with fucking hosts. No, it wasn't. It's because she was worried that Ophelia thought her fucking career was going to be over because she wasn't going to be connected to Bob Seven anymore. I don't know if I put the audio in this. I legitimately don't. Fuck, I hope I did. Or my editor might have told me, but I didn't. But there's a specific audio where Ophelia says like, oh, no, like, I don't know who's going to side with who. Like, I think like Bob Seven is the bigger host or something. It was something like that. Bose has also been unbelievably gaslit the entire way concerning the Ophelia story. Bob Seven had, strangely enough, a prior conversation that eerily mirrored almost exactly what was going to happen in the future with Ophelia's allegations. He explicitly asked Bose what would happen if Ophelia were to come out with any kind of inappropriate sexual allegation against him, and Bose told Bob Seven that she would remain fiercely loyal to him. During that conversation, Bob Seven told her that if Ophelia had ever come out with any kind of allegation, he would want Bose to come forward and speak the truth to what had happened instead of defending him as a friend. Hey, there, there's a log of, of Bose basically saying, like, you know, uh, she says, hmm, I don't know. I I, I could just be mad because I'm simping for Steve, but I think I simp for all my friends. Like, if Ophelia started talking about shit about you and said you sexually harassed her, I would call Ophelia so fast and put the fear of God into her. And then I was going on to say, like, what if I did, though? Then you shout me, like, please. And then she was just, like, going on to say that, uh, like, you know, I, I said, if, if you think I'm a sexual harasser, please expose me. And she said, I can't wait to push you more into the entertainment industry. So you learn wait, how to... Wait, who said this? Bose? Uh, Bose. Ironically enough, when Bose was told by Ophelia that Bob Seven had made inappropriate comments towards her, Bob Seven turned Bose's accusation against her by manipulating Ophelia into believing Bose was the one orchestrating the entire harassment allegation, despite there being absolutely no evidence of this being true. And I will reiterate, up to this point, I have explained how the group call formed, I've explained why every single individual member had been dragged in there, and I've played you allegations of Ophelia concerning not only what Bob Seven had said to her, but Bob Seven's position on The Austin Show, and showing you that the reason why Bose approached Austin was because of Ophelia's claims and her concern about Bob Seven being a producer on that show. One of Bose's largest reasons for going to Austin with this claim was due to Ophelia's concerns about Bob Seven working for Austin. And one of the primary reasons why Bob Seven was fired was due to the inappropriate advances he'd made towards Ophelia, something that even Casey Tron later admits to on stream, though she does clarify that it wasn't sexual, uh, it was sexual harassment, not sexual assault. Even Casey Tron seems to know why Bob Seven was fired. Where Bob worked, um, I know for a fact that the reason he was let go was because of his interaction with Ophelia just coming off really inappropriate. Um, I know that is specifically the reason. Sorry. As far as, um, as far as um, where Bob worked, um, I know for a fact that the reason he was let go was because of his interaction with Ophelia just coming off really inappropriate. Um, I know that is specifically the reason. So I just want to be clear here. Casey Tron was not in the initial group call. Casey Tron is known about Bob's creepy behavior with women in the past. And Casey Tron was made aware by Bob explicitly why Bob was fired. But for some reason, she still found it necessary to come out and make tweets both today and in the past, alluding to the fact that the only reason I ever went public with anything was because of my personal drama being leaked. Casey Tron is just as complicit in the manipulation of Ophelia as Bob Seven is because she lends a lot of credence to Bob Seven's character. And I think that's fucking disgusting. And then... I feel like a lot of the... The situation with Ophelia and Bob was also called sexual assault. It was sexual harassment, if you're being technical. It's, it, it is different. But those overstepped and called it, like, sexual assault whenever she, she was, like, talking... If that's the hill she wants to die on, sure. Now I know why Destiny hates characters. <laughs> 
Bose initially said that she wouldn't want anyone to lose their job over personal drama, but she felt an obligation to go to Austin after hearing about Ophelia's experiences. Again, this is a claim that I did not even reference on my stream on the 4th, yet this is one of the primary reasons that Austin let Bob Seven go. Bob Seven has also revealed potentially damaging personal information from Austin to several women as well. Now that I think about it, he kind of told... Fuck. He told a se Okay, so I think actually Austin told a secret to Bob, and Bob told me that. Now that I think about it, he broke Austin's trust on something. Holy shit. Yeah, now that I think, but I don't really know if I should, like, share it. Wait, That's the thing, because, he told like, me stuff about Austin, too. Bob is a recruiter for Austin, and that feels uncomfortable now. Yeah, of course. Because he also talks and reach out to people and stuff like that, and he yeah. he could have said so much and shared so much with so many people that we don't even know. That, plus if he hates us now for talking, he can't really yeah, fuck over Bose or Melina because they know Austin, but like, I'm scared for <laughs> Ophelia and shit. And just generally, it just makes me feel uncomfortable that he's an Austin show producer and then he's going to, we've all been on the Austin show, going to literally people who are involved in his work and then doing this. Like, that feels... Yeah. I wasn't talking to you guys, I was talking to my mom. Bob Seven has also admitted telling Bose that she's done things that she claims she hasn't done, saying that he was initially confident that he was forcing her to remember a story that she had admitted ultimately probably never happened. He has also told this false and incredibly private story to at least two other women, Peach Jew and Melina as well, both of whom have no business knowing it. Yeah, I, I genuinely think I've, I've been very good to Bose. Mm hmm there's arguments for, for me being shitty, but I don't think there's an argument for me not being good about this. What made her cry? What made her cry? Mm -hmm. You made her cry once. What was it about? It was... She said something while drunk. Mm -hmm. And then I referenced it. And she was like, Bob, that never happened. And I was pretty confident. Mm -hmm. And this is honestly something that's like super interesting because I... Uh, I, I did feel very confident. So um, she she basically said like, "Bob, look, I'm telling you, it didn't happen." And I I was I was trying to reassure her, saying like, "Hey, boys, I just want to let you know, like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm not judging you for it. Like, it's all good." Um, because like mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess I was pretty confident that that she did say it. But give, given another story uh, that that like uh, talked about with Peach, like I don't I don't even actually know if I have the right to be confident there. Um, hmm. About so, the like, the. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a, because she, we, we told different versions of that stories, and I, I think I actually believe her, mm -hmm. um, which uh, it's, yeah, that's concerning, because, uh, and again, like, that is uh, something that I, I think the, the Bose card sort of, sort of brings that up, because um, there, there's, like, no reason for me to, like, okay, so, like, you, you could sort of argue with the, the, the story that, like, I had intent to be dishonest there, where with the Bose making Bose cry, like I had no reason to be dishonest. Like I was confident and it was purely to my own detriment, mm -hmm. you know? Like there was no other incentives there. So this would be an example of gaslighting. Betrayal 4. Peachy Chew's Trust. This one is a lot shorter. Bob Seven told at least one other woman, Ophelia Bear, that he intended to fly out to Canada to fuck Peachy Chew, potentially implicating her in a sexual relationship with him that she absolutely was not participating in. Further, Peachy Chew was under the impression this entire time that Bob Seven was not experiencing any sexual attraction towards anyone. These are my list of sins. I believe I've included two adequate nukes. I believe I have delivered on my initial vague posting promise. I probably shouldn't have brought these up initially if I wasn't willing to initially bring them out. I legitimately, maybe if you have a tad of bit of empathy for me, I don't ask for it because mainly I don't give a fuck if you're empathetic towards me or not, but I really didn't see Bob Seven actually coming out here and actually trying to refute these claims when he should have known that we were recording so much 
What a fucking idiot. How the fuck could you think that you could get away with telling so many blatant fucking lies by playing all of these games, by, by machine gunning out 500 pages of logs, by posting some shitty, bad to read, boring, horribly fucking written 39 page manifesto that you knew nobody would go through, and then trying to follow that up with some five page zinger at the end, implying that you'd proved a single fucking claim that you'd set out to prove. What an absolute shit show for you to think that you could get away with doing that. Like, it took you three weeks to get to put together like some massive fucking document with all these fucking lies in it, it took me 36 hours, okay? Because I'm telling the truth. Because everybody that's involved in this situation, even the people on your side, probably know how fucking full of shit you are. It's unbelievable that he would have thought that it was a good idea to try to come out and fight on his side of things here, especially when he'd already been fired by Austin. The second to last section of this is the supporting cast. And a special shout out to, we have Ophelia Bear, The Manipulated. After Ophelia Bear expressed anger that she had been insulted privately to other women and expressed concern that Bob Seven was part of the production crew for Austin's show, she spoke with Bob Seven on the night of the third, giving Bob Seven time to set the record straight with her, causing her to release a statement where she did a full recant of anything negative she may have said during the call. Now, conveniently enough, Bob Seven released his statement. I think his statement linked to Ophelia Bear's statement and then her statement linked to Casey Tron's statement. It's almost like there was some massive collaboration behind the scenes to do some conspiracy. Hmm, pretty crazy how that projection works. In this, well, actually, she makes a few misleading claims or outright incorrect claims in that statement as well. Firstly, she claims that all of the girls said that Bob Seven had never done anything toward them, which is strange as Ophelia is literally in the call when Bo speaks about Bob Seven leaking Melina and redacted one's nudes, and when Pichichu is speaking about how Bob Seven literally shit talks other women. She also goes on to say that Bose then went forward saying we had to report this, even though it was Ophelia who had expressed concern about Bob Seven's role on the Austin's show. This is so hurtful. That, and I understand, I don't blame Ophelia, because I know that she's probably getting mind-fucked right now behind the scenes by Bob Seven. But we all listened on that recording where she said, I don't know what we're going to do. Bob Seven is fucking an Austin producer. For her to spin that as Bose was the one that said we had to go to Austin, holy shit. No wonder Bose was so fucking livid when that statement got published. Ophelia also misrepresents in her statement that Bob Seven mainly, may, merely made sexual jokes towards her when in reality he had called her while drunk and repeatedly told her that she needed to get fucked and told her that he was going to Canada to fuck her after visiting and fucking Pichichu first. All of this was offered up completely unprompted. Ophelia goes on to say in this conversation that she didn't want to say no because she liked Bob Seven. She then goes on to claim that she was only in agreement with the conversation when she was still operating under the assumption that everything Bose had said in the call was fully correct. She has yet to point out what was said that she believes is incorrect. She also felt as though there was manipulation by both sides, yet she has not pointed out what manipulation on either side there was, although there almost certainly was a great deal of manipulation when Bob Seven spoke with her afterwards. What's more, her entire statement is, under, is undermined by her admitting that it was most likely in her best interest not to pick a side regardless. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and see because he, like, he did pose it like he was like, Bose is obviously going to choose Destiny's side because Destiny has the host. Like he has so much power if he just does slash raid or whatever. And that's why I'm so mad at oh, Bose. Come because... on. He said Where the same thing that? to me. He said, like, a lot of things, but half of them flew over my head. because He said the same thing to me. So Bob is already going behind the scenes, rallying the troops before this conversation even takes place. I was like, I don't care if Bose is nice to me, and I don't want to pick a side because, it, like, the most beneficial thing for me is to just never say anything and not pick a side. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which is ultimately, apparently, what she's done. I would like to make it clear that I do not really hold Ophelia Bear personally responsible for her 180. I think that she is a victim in all of this, and Bob Seven, Casey Tron, and Minx have played a role in her manipulation, convincing her that it's in her best interest to side with Bob Seven here. I wrote this down, okay? Fuck what I wrote down. Speaking honestly, she is in an incredibly fucking difficult position. She's in a group with girls that she doesn't really know, seemingly sharing an experience that a lot of other people seem to have similar experiences of, but her long-term like friend and confidant is Bob Seven. Melina, after I told her that Bob Seven was playing games, Melina stuck out with Bob Seven for like fucking three or four months past that. And so did, er and so did Erica, or maybe like two or three months or whatever. Um, like, 
I understand why Ophelia is so mind fucked in all of this. And I don't like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, she fucked up. Like she's a fucking horrible person. I would never say that about her because I think that she is literally getting mind fucked right now by Bob Seven and maybe Casey Trunt and maybe Minx too. Um, so like, honest to God, like I feel a little bit bad, including like what I have for you because I know that she's probably going to get some level of harassment, which I think is disgusting. I think that anybody harassing her over this is absolutely fucking disgusting. Um, but like, I totally... Um, I, like, I, I can empathize with the difficult position that she's been put in, especially with Bob Seven whispering in her ear like crazy behind the scenes. Um, I don't actually have this in the document, but I just want to include this audio clip real quick as well, because Casey Trun and Mink said that they were going to leak from the group call where Bose was talking about how like, oh, like, you know, I should let them go first, but I don't want to do another document. OK, um, she's literally leaking in the background. No, it's just. She's literally leaking. Um, she's probably going to leak that Bo said, oh, we'll give you hosts. We'll give you hosts. Trying to imply that no, like Bose is trying to manipulate her. Here's the audio clip that's relevant to that. It's just out of usefulness. Bob is very useful to me, too. So I don't want to fully like cut him okay. off. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Try to get some use for out of him after this. Why don't you yeah. give it a shot? <laughs> I'm just saying he was the one who boosted me from five viewers to 30 and like got me on my first Austin shows and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I understand that I do like <clears throat> this is why people in the chat were talking about like, oh, like we can host you or whatever. It wasn't some nefarious ploy to fucking trick her into buying into the other side. It was because she expressed genuine concern that like she's going to get fucked if she exposes Bob Seven. Our second supporting role, Casey Tron, the White Knight. For reasons unknown to anyone but herself, Casey Tron decided to publicly insert herself into the mix. It's possible that her positive history with Bob Seven and her negative history with Bose led her to making public com uh, comments about this, but she was largely uninvolved in any of the relevant conversations, so I'm not sure why she's making patently false comments about how she was in the call with the other girls. This is not true. Casey Tron was not in the original call. It is bullshit. We had one call with her afterwards that didn't include all the girls. It was a much smaller and much shorter call. And in that call, she even corroborates a lot of the allegations made against Bob Seven, namely that he inappropriately pushes jokes with girls too far in a sexual manner because he thought he could get away with it because he had a big head. Casey Tron coming out here and saying that she was in the call with all the other girls is a fucking lie. She was dragged into the group chat after, but to my knowledge and to the knowledge of everyone else on the call, there were no other large group calls involving Casey Tron. I don't know why the fuck she decided to come in here and defend Bob the abuser in order to fucking salvage his relationship and stake her reputation online with his while attacking my character. What a stupid fucking moron. She was never part of the original large call, so her confidence in speaking publicly literally comes exclusively from whatever Bob Seven has told her. She publishes a document of her own, sharing several random stories about Bose in an attempt to assassinate her character without any relevance to the current matters being discussed. I can't prove this because I don't have access to all of their conversations, but Casey Tron's strategy seems very much, um, Casey Tron's strategy, uh, seems like this is very much aligned with, uh, Bob Seven's strategy. We need to shit on Bose. We need to tear her down. We need to make it sound like she was the one that all the allegations were coming from. So Casey Tron releases this random fucking story or a collection of random fucking stories about like Bose in order to make it look like she's an untrustworthy pe uh, person. Now, Bose says there's a second, um, Bo says that there's like a second uh, part to all of this that she's got an explanation. I don't know, to be frank, and I don't really give a fuck, to be frank, because none of these accusations have literally fucking anything to do with what's currently being discussed. Casey Tron later, sorry, I wasn't going to do any of this live. I was trying to um, have all this in the document, but we got breaking news, sorry. Um, Casey Tron later tries to tweet out, I wasn't in the big call, but I was added to the group and in a call where you guys filled me in on everything. If I said I was in the call, I misspoke. Sorry that you're mad. Not everyone involved carries the same opinion as you. But the thing was, she did have the same opinion. That's why when we called her, and that was the audio you listened to earlier, she wasn't surprised by anything that was said, and she basically made similar types of statements about Bob Seven and him pushing jokes too far. I don't know why the fuck she's pretending afterwards that she didn't say that, or why she's pretending she didn't say she was in the call, when she said she was in the call on stream, and she posted on the subreddit that she was in the call. 
She then goes on to claim that she's worried about the happiness in Bose's voice to be exposing Bob Seven, as though this is somehow proof that everything being said is false. She does reference that Bose mentioned dropping host for the girl, but this could easily be seen as a way to alleviate her fears about being cut off from more popular streamer outlets due to her exposing Bob Seven, rather than some nefarious plan to promise her host in exchange for false confessions, like Bob Seven is trying to say. The idea that names were publicly stated on my stream from women who were unaware that it would happen is also just completely false. If Casey Tron wants to provide any evidence of this, she's welcome to, but I am close friends with all of the women mentioned and we spoke quite extensively before I released anything. There is no point where I mention Casey Tron or Minx or any of the redacted pe peoples or persons. It is absolutely false that Casey Tron says this. She and Minx decided to butt into this where they do not fucking belong for no fucking reason other than to help Bob Seven continue to manipulate another victim of his that was just trying to get onto the Austin show. I am incredibly disappointed that Casey Tron allowed her personal relationship with Bob Seven to inspire her to make such mind-bogglingly stupid statements in a public forum. I believe that she contributed to the manipulation of Ophelia Bear by lending credibility to Bob Seven's statements, and I think it is grossly irresponsible for her to speak about calls when she was never in the original call where the women were originally sharing their experiences. A short paragraph. Minx. The lost and confused. I honestly have no idea how Minx stumbled her way into this situation. She was not part of the initial call. She was never on voice, to my knowledge, with any of the group. And she was never brought into, up in a public setting, ever. I'm not sure if she's just lonely or hungry for attention, but for some reason she found it necessary to defend Bob Seven's reputation in a public forum while he was manipulating Ophelia Bear into retracting her claims regarding his treatment of her. Both her and Casey Tron share the responsibility of Bob Seven's treatment of other people by encouraging and supporting this behavior and character publicly. And for a side of that, another breaking news tidbit. I report Destiny for harassment. I hope you guys do too. I don't know why you deleted that mod. I don't know why you deleted that. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> You know his drama frogs reported me. Imagine this stupid fuck sitting here and laughing about trying to report my stream while she's literally defending Bob Seven, who is fucked Ophelia's mind, like, into another dimension with the crazy shit that he's telling her. Initially, when I made this document, Bob Seven was going to be the main, ex like, person that I was going to talk about, but I, I cannot put into words. This is the part of the stream where I wish I could, like, cry for you to tell you how upset I am, blah, 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 blah. Um, I cannot... I cannot tell you how upset I am that Casey Tron and Minx decided to stake their reputation on Bob Seven and that they were going to defend him while all of this is sitting behind the scenes. They didn't reach out to any of us to figure out the validity of anything that Ophelia had said. They all relied on Bob Seven's word or statements Ophelia made after talking to Bob Seven. I'm nervous about playing this because this is going to be live live because I haven't actually vetted this clip yet. But apparently this is a statement of them getting Ophelia to change her public statements. I don't know if this will be relevant or not, but breaking. Why is he bringing you up? He mentioned my name the first time and that's when I got mad. I told Bowles. I, I did not mention her name ever. I don't care about her. The only reason anyone cares about her is her silly accent. Why the fuck would I bring her up when I'm dealing with some crazy fucking shit in my personal life? I don't give a fuck about Minx in any fucking way, size, shape, form, or capacity. Why the fuck did she think I would bring her up? I, honest to God, didn't even remember that she was in the fucking group. I said to Bose, you'll see in the statement, I was like, I said I did not want to be included in this. I don't think Bob is in the right, but I don't think you guys are in the right. And they pulled me into it. And that's why I tweeted, wow, big words from a white man that says the N-word. And then he got angry, so now he's trying to destroy me. Because his little man feelings got hurt. His little fucking man feelings got hurt, which is... So to be clear, I don't really care about my feelings, okay? The types of people that I deal on the internet are way worse than people whose jobs rely on them appealing to 14-year-olds that play Minecraft, okay? Like, the issue that I have is that she is using her platform to stake a public defense of Bob Seven, who is, as we speak, mind-fucking and manipulating another person that he sexually harassed who was just trying to get on the Austin show. And this was, again, the primary reason why he was fired by Austin. So, uh, I, this is what it is. 
He screamed at Casey and recorded Casey. Yeah, they were. This is the thing. They record conversations out of fucking context. Like, without permission. I'm pretty sure in a lot of states, that's illegal. That's illegal. I'm not going to raid him. I'm not going to raid him. Why would I do that? Why are you asking me to raid him? Listen to the obfuscation. You know what else is illegal is revenge porn. One more. Live breaking. You know, me, someone else, I'm not going to say her name, and Ophelia talked, and the guy, and we were like, it isn't, though. It feels like they're forcing it on us, but... They took her story and they said it without her permission. Do you not see that's how fucked up? No remorse. They had no remorse. So she's literally talking about how they all got together with Bob Seven leading the fucking charge to get poor little Ophelia to change. I'm take I'm robbing her of her agency, but in this, but like, holy fuck. Like, she's literally bragging openly about like, oh yeah, we all dragged Ophelia into a call and then we, sh we got her to, to understand her story. We told her the other people were manipulating her. You know, me, someone else, I'm not going to say her name, and Ophelia talked, and the guy, and we were like, it isn't, though. It feels like they're forcing it on us. But they took her story, and they said it without her permission. Do you not see that's how fucked up? No remorse. They had no remorse. You know. To reiterate, both her and Casey Tron share the responsibility of Bob Seven's treatment of other people by encouraging and supporting both his behavior and character, character publicly. I would say that they are almost equally culpable at this point because they are serving as an amplification platform for the types of things that Bob Seven is doing. The end. <sighs> the famous line. Let's see you talk your way out of this one. I would like to summarize this by stating that I have more than adequately refuted every point that Bob Seven made in his second published document. Bose did not pressure Ophelia to come out with a story about him. On the contrary, Ophelia was the one to express concern over Bob Seven being a producer for The Austin Show. Bob Seven's private conversation with Ophelia was probably more akin to manipulation than him apologizing to her. Whatever story Ophelia took back was still enough to have Bob Seven fired from his job, independent of me doing a stream on the 4th. Ophelia's story was not recanted at all. She actually confirms in her document that Bob Seven made sexual advances towards her. Bose's claim of sexual assault is too far. She should have said sexual harassment, which is true, but that's probably not the hill that Bob Seven and Casey Tron and Minx want to die on. Ophelia might have pleaded she did not want the story to go public, but her concern about Bob Seven's position on Austin's show probably, spurring on, probably was the thing that spurred on Bose to contact Austin, and it probably left Bose feeling betrayed once Bob Seven released his statements refuting everything. This is no excuse for Bose to betray Ophelia's trust, but it paints her in a less malevolent and more sympathetic light. Bose felt like she got incredibly fucking backstabbed on this. The only reason why Bose went to Austin was because of Ophelia's statements, was because of Ophelia expressing concern that Bob Seven was still working for Austin. Bose herself said that she didn't want to go to Austin with these issues, and she only did it when Ophelia brought up her concern that Bob Seven still worked for Austin. So the person who's actually responsible the person who's actually responsible for Bob getting for getting for Bob Seven being fired is actually Bob Seven himself because of the sexual advances that he made. But it was all spurred on by Ophelia's statements, the person that now is supposedly on his side. Bose did not need to go public with Ophelia's story to get Bob Seven in trouble, as he'd already been fired from his job. This idea that Bose is revealing is, is uh, revealing things in order to get Bob Seven fired—that's not true. He'd already been fired. Ophelia is not responsible for Bob Seven losing his job. I want to reload on this, okay? I want to, yes, okay? I want to be very clear on this. Bob Seven and his inappropriate sexual advances and his screen sharing of nudes are the reason Bob Seven lost his job. I don't know what Ophelia is being told right now in a group chat with Casey, Bob Seven, and Minx behind the scenes, but it is not her fault. It is absolutely not her fault. What Bob Seven did is why he got fired, and Ophelia has absolutely none of the blame to take for that. My goal was not to cancel Bob Seven from his job, as I'd already thought that he'd been fired, and I did not leak any of the more damning nukes on my stream. Did I vaguely allude to them? Yeah, I did. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I really didn't think he would come back like this. I really didn't think he'd try it. The only way... Oh, and then for the story about um, Erica and, and, the, and the Redacted 2's nudes, the only way Bose could have asked Bob Seven for a nude of a particular person on Austin's show is if Bob Seven himself made her aware that that nude was leaked and was out there on the internet. 
There's no way that she's randomly asking for it. And her asking for it after Bob Seven makes her aware of its existence does not exonerate Bob Seven from sharing the fact that nudes have been leaked from other people on the fucking show who explicitly didn't want other people to know about it. I wish I could say that this was the end of the road, but I'm sure Bob Seven will try to speak around some of these assertions with more half-truths and blatant lies. I am able to provide further context and additional information behind any of the other claims, if need be. Huh. That's the end of that. I'm sending this to oh, Melina. If you want, you can post it on uh, Twitter. Everybody could go and pour through the document, the screenshots, the audio logs if you want. If Bob7 is available and he wants to hop into Discord, he can come on and chat now. I'm very curious to see how he could talk his way out of everything that's been said. Casey Tron's tweet, short people tend to reach. Do you think I missed anything? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I Steven, can't believe what? I, I have one thing to request. I missed the whole thing. Can you read that again? Yeah, good one. Well, you know what? It's linked on <laughs> Molina's Twitter, so. Uh, hey, how come you said you hate characters? This is the most performative I've ever seen you in my Not life. Not being performative at all. Like, oh, really? My reputation is under siege oh, by really? a guy that like fucking published a 40-page manifesto of lies and personal conversations. Yeah, so, just, so just read it out. You don't have to go fucking Super Saiyan 10 on Well, I have to be like persuasive. I have to like talk about it. What, do you, what am I supposed to do? Read it in a, like a robot voice? Did you want to have fucking okay. Brian read it out on TSS? All right, all right. Get Bob in here. If he wants to join. I'm curious how he would talk about it. He can join General Lobby and I'll drag him in. So all those recordings were January 3rd? Of the um, there's a lot of different dates for the recording. Let me have them dated in the <clears throat> Google Drive. But, but. I, I don't understand. How, how did they know to record before they knew Bob was... Because as soon as everything started going on, I told everybody to make recordings of everything because I told them that Bob is a slimy piece of shit and that he will never own up to a single thing. So I told almost every single person involved in this, you need to start making recordings because as soon as Bob starts talking, Bob starts lying. And as long as you have the same story from different points of view, it's very easy to catch him in a lie. So all of this document was constructed on, the, on, on, on their recordings, basically. It proves all of the doublespeak and it proves all of the lies that he tells. Mm, is Ophelia the only one protecting Bob or not getting involved? Ah, now the walk back begins with this stupid piece of shit. Me and Minx have never defended Bob publicly. We both denounced his actions. I literally even say what he did with sexual harassment. And also, no, I haven't fucking manipulated Ophelia. Neither is Minx. There is no call or group between me, Minx, Ophelia, and Bob that exists. She literally... She was literally tweeting that the only... Show me the tweet of the only credible allegation. Where is the tweet where she says the only credible allegation that comes out tonight is from people that I'm fucking. Also, Casey Tron is lying because we already have a clip showing that there does exist calls. You know, me, someone else, I'm not going to say her name, and Ophelia talked, and the guy, and we were like, it isn't though. It feels like they're forcing on us, but... They took her story and they said it without her permission. Already confirmed the existence of other group calls. And for not defending Bob, Casey Tron literally tweeted, prediction there will be no allegations that don't involve blindly trusting a piece of evidence from Lena or Bose, who are both fucking destiny. I would be lying to you right now if I said some of the enjoyment that I was going to get out of this wasn't watching these fucking pieces of shit squirm around to try to explain. I told Melina, and she'll, you, you can ask her, or she'll say it on stream later, I literally told her, one of the things that's going to be interesting is watching them try to squirm away from Bob Seven after they staked their public reputation on him. And I knew they were going to do it too. Slimy fucking pieces of shit. <sighs> fuck this shit. What a, what a, what an, what an investment of my time. <clears throat> so how you doing? I'm good. I'm actually like, I missed the first two hours. What did I miss? You I just, well, go watch the VOD, I guess. All right. If you could sum this up, um, where did people Bob are saying when, he, when he did that 40 page lead, right? 
Um, yeah, honestly, what I said at the beginning was true. He should have left it alone afterwards because then it would have just been me shitting on him socially. He could have like fixed his private life. Like not many people because like, I don't even, Oh, she deleted the clip (laughs) and deleted the tweet. Good. Fuck him. Let him delete everything. I don't give a fuck because I've got the fucking VOD and I'm going to have the fucking YouTube video. Both of those people are complicit in Bob Seven's manipulation. I don't want only Bob Seven to be the one that's looked badly on this. Like Casey Tron and Minx are literally fucking like rallying behind him. Bob Seven Problems, he should have left us the fuck alone. I don't know why this fucking moron was so confident that he could, well, it's because he didn't know we were recording everything, I guess, is probably the problem. So he thought he could continue to twist and lie. It's crazy if he didn't retaliate, he would have got, gone away with like 5K viewers every day. Yeah, he would have been fine. He would have been totally fine. It would have just been like, oh, like he could have even memed it, dude. Like if I was Bob Seven, like I would go live next day and it's like, yeah, you guys caught me. I was literally talking to every single fucking girl in Destiny's life. Like, that's how much of a fucking chat I I literally <laughs> cucked him with his fucking fiance. I literally had his fiance telling me that she fucking loved me while I was fucking shit talking to like five different girls he knew. Like, I'm such a fucking chat. Like, Bob Seven could have played it off so well and he actually would have been fine. And you know what? And I wouldn't have given a fuck. I would have been like, oh, at least he's fucking gone. And I would have carried on with my shit. I don't know why he thought it was a good idea to try to come back on this and, and accuse me of bluffing. I really don't get when streamers don't assume they're being recorded on a call. Like, I don't get that. Like, shouldn't all influencers know there's no such thing as a private call? Am I the only one, like, two years of doing this, I've never felt that I'm private, you know? Mm-hmm. It's weird. And, and especially when you're lying about things said on said calls, too. Oh, <sighs> oh Okay. <clears throat> um... Uh, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I, some of you had donated. I feel bad that some of your donations got, because I had this muted the whole time, but I also don't want to encourage or solicit donations. Yeah, the thing is breaking down. Ah. <sighs> Oh my God, that donation. I don't know if I can read that. Short people tend to reach LaMeo more like fat fucks tend to bite off more than they can chew. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ugh. Plug canvassing. Um, <clears throat> okay. Sorry. Okay, so believe it or not, this is not normally what I want to do for content. Um, I didn't think I'd be dragged into another round of this. Um, I have, um, the things that I actually care about are I'm doing a large canvassing event in Omaha, Nebraska. We're going to try to get a mayor elected to unseat Gene Stothert, who's the Republican mayor there. If you are interested in canvassing or volunteering or phone banking, I'm going to plug the Reddit thread for that. Or if you want to donate to the help, the funds for this, I'm funding all of this myself. Um, it's probably going to cost around $60,000 for this whole like two to three month project. So any contributions I appreciate. Um, and then usually I read over those donations, um, on the end, at the end of a stream. But um, link the PayPal to the document. Oh, that sounds like really fucked, but. Oh, and then also just to show this. And I'm again, I'm sorry, but Ophelia Bear, the following is a message to Destiny. I have no way of contacting myself, so I have to post this publicly. Hi, Destiny, this clip came into my knowledge this morning. I wanted to let you know that I don't accept any public spending of any call recording. But clipped by Bob Seven. Um, anyway, I don't know if, um, I don't know if this is ever going to, uh, turn the tide of LSF or turn the tide of public opinion. That's not really my goal, but I did say that coming from 2020 to 2021, one thing that I noticed is that, um, one thing that I noticed is, uh, people will refer back to like big documents. So like when I did the N word manifest, people refer back to that to see like what actually happened. So I kind of wanted to, um. I wanted to make sure that the record was at least there. So if somebody wants to go back and see what happened, like there is some coherent version of the events of the story that actually happened. So that was like my big drive to kind of like crafting this to make sure that there was a coherent story that was out there that people could see. 
Um, I don't know if I could ever turn the tide of LSF because Bob Seven was very smart in setting the narrative. Now, this is a little bit conspiratorial from me, but I think he might have explicitly planned when he was going to drop it because he started his stream when I was in the middle of D&D, I think, or after D&D, when I was doing a four-hour podcast and I had no time to respond. So by the time I actually went live to respond to things, it was always like, it was already like 10, 11 p.m. and he'd already set the narrative so hard. Um, that yeah. combined with the fact that his uh, entire Discord had been like obsessively brigading, upvoting all of the positive threats and then downvoting any of the new ones that came up, um, so, like worked really well to set the narrative. Um, I'm never gonna sit here and cry about how unfairly that I'm treated, even though I do believe I do get unfairly tr treated quite a bit um, <clears throat> because it's just not worth it because nobody really gives a fuck. But I will say that like, I think my content got banned from LSF for months because one person posted a link to live stream fail in my Discord. So it was a little bit upsetting to see that this was going on in Bob Seven's Discord the entire time this drama was unfolding. Not to mention the fact that I have like a bot that auto removes threads and everything. My if any of these people want to jump in and chat, I'll gladly do it. But um, I know that they won't because they don't have anything to say. So my statement came out. Um, I wasn't involved in this much. I think he's just roping me in because I have like 10 times the followers as him. And, you know, Destiny lives on drama. Destiny that, lives on drama. So he's like, Destiny wait, wait. is a scary dude. Hold on one second. So my statement came out. Um, I wasn't involved in this much. I think he's just roping me in because... By the way, I literally never roped this stupid fuck in. I don't know why the fuck she's saying that. The only reason why she appeared in this is because she decided to tweet out. Because I have like 10 times the followers as him and, you know, Destiny lives on drama. Destiny lives on drama. So he's like... The bread and butter content that I do is political content. It's not drama. You, on the other hand, are literally famous for being on drama shows like the Austin Lover host. But, okay, a little bit of a uh, live in a glass house, throw stones issue there, but all right. Let's do Ouch. this. Oh, her, yeah. Let's, uh, why is he bringing you up? He mentioned my name the first time, and that's when I got mad. I told Bose, I said to Bose, you'll see in the statement, I was like, I said I did not want to be included in this. I don't think Bob is in the right, but I don't think you guys are in the right. And they pulled me into it. And that's why I tweeted, wow, big words from a white man that says the N-word. And then he got angry, so now he's trying to destroy me. Because he, he Keep in mind that she's saying this after she admits to jumping in a call with Bob and Ophelia and one other random girl, who knows who that is, to admit that they got Ophelia Bear to recant her story. I was sitting here, like, freaking the fuck out because I thought that he was going to bring out the personal shit that Bob did to me, which I didn't want to fucking talk about. That's why I'm even here, because I was freaking the fuck out about it, and I wanted to clarify if there was any misinformation. Holy shit. It, like, fucking blows my mind. The destiny of fucking stranger had more respect for me than fucking Bob, someone I was close friends with for two years. I was sitting here scared shitless. Oh, I try not to bring her up as much as I could. <sighs> um, <clears throat> okay. Um... This is the tweet where she inserted herself and you reacting to it. Okay, I tend to stay in my lane because um I cuz I just don't care about most of these people. I just don't. Yeah, I don't I I don't think I ever talk about like the fucking Austin shows or whatever. This is like not shit that I care about. So I don't know why the fuck they're talking to me. I don't have much of an interest in like PG-13 internet content or whatever. Um if Minx wants to like call me a drama frog and like call my credibility into question, like I will destroy Bob's personal life so hard that he will have literally nothing left. Yeah, I guess I was a little bit vague here and I shouldn't have been, but I'd like to think I followed through. Um, if she wants to like get online and talk shit and do all this dumb shit and like draw all this shit out. I don't know why she jumped on this, but this was literally her first tweet about this. Lameo, y'all really believe a drama frog? So fuck her. Um, 
I'm trying to, I just, I want to be done with this after today. So, is there anything that I, um, ah, and more of the walk back, more of the walk back. I never excused Bob's actions in that stream. Show me where I did. I never, I denounced it all. Uh. What a subhuman piece of shit. What a worthless fuck. I can't believe she had the audacity to come out and fucking stand Bob and claim that the only people that were fucking believing me were people that were getting fucked by me. How disgusting. I, I can't underscore how disgusting Casey's behavior is here because she was also on recording behind the scenes confirming the things that we already thought to be true about Bob Seven as well. Like, in case you missed that, like, she's literally... But I'm just like, damn. I feel like Bob got really big headed and I feel like mm -hmm. he just thought that he was infallible and maybe he thought that it was like all a joke or something that even whenever he like called girls and was super pushy with them, it was like a joke and he was infallible for it because he's Bob or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, she's even like saying as much. Like, fuck her, dude. All right. I'm done talking about her. Um... What? Uh, fuck, you're not even serious. I can't tell if there's anybody that has... <laughs> are there any questions or concerns or anything that you think I missed? I feel like I covered everything. Um, I, I don't really want to profit off drama, but like people have donated and now it's not shown up. So I'm going to... I'm muting all further donations, so don't do it, but I'll just like play through what's here because um, they've already donated, so... You gnome fuck! Is content like this worth your time? You I mean, I don't know. Like, I have to take a whole day off to, like, get all my fucking ducks in a row for this, Stevie. but. 20,000 views. <coughs> well, um, 28,000. Ben MC, right? it's a five pounds. <laughs> Let's go. You gnome fuck! Stuart Keating, 10 Australian dollars. All right, guys. This is it. Stand back and stand by. You gnome fuck! Yeah, we actually, someone said ways. he's more angry at Minx and Casey than Bob. How, that is true. What I'm angry at Bob Seven, and I think I've, like, you sufficiently destroyed us. But, like, Casey Long. and Minx had nothing to... They shouldn't have been involved here. They literally threw in their, in their stock with him. They literally jumped into this without any reason. You gnome fuck! And they give him so much more credibility. Me, like, I yeah, didn't know Bob, on his, own, Bob, Bob on his own. Bob, Bob on his own. You're attacking ignorance and not like the master manipulator that you think Bob is. That's crazy. I, I no, they didn't have any Sovereign reason. Sovereign killer, five dollars. Come on, at least play music if you are going to be late to your own stream. You gnome fuck. Bob seven five pounds. Beta male. Isn't excuse what the fuck is Zerka talking about? It it is. If you're comparing you it to a fucking master fuck. manipulator, you stupid fuck. You'll always be in chat. You'll always be a nobody. You gnome fuck. No job, Bob Godstini. <sighs> okay. Um, how much more of this shit is left? Fuck. Antita King, fifty dollars. Oh, hey Destiny, you. I've watched you since your debate with Naked Ape during my conservative phase, and I've loved your content ever since. Keep up the great work, man. Love you, buddy. Oh, you fuck. Fuck. It's just a bit. You gnome fuck. <laughs> Look at this. This is me saying that I believe that any of the allegations that came forward would just be from Bose and Molina's account, just like the nudes being leaked. And it's literally just a prediction. I've never said that Bob's harassment towards Ophelia wasn't uh, real or unfounded. Now... Bob seven, five pounds. <laughs> In sorry destiny you win, please have mercy. Prediction. There will be no allegations that involve blindly trusting a piece of information from Molina and Bose who are both fucking destiny. 
What a what a fucking loser, dude. Jesus Christ. This is what smoking weed for a decade and doing nothing with your life does to your fucking brain, I guess. Holy shit. You are such a lying scumbag angry manlet. BTW, you are losing Melina. Maybe if you talk louder and faster, you can get Casey. You gnome fuck! Go take of Grandma for two weeks and League is now a banned phrase depressed in me. You gnome fuck! Sexually open me ooh. If you listen, if you donate, everybody said not to donate. I'm skipping your shit because I want to leave. Okay, I'm done for today. <laughs> this is what I needed to do, and now I'm gonna go out and fucking take a walk. Untrue, you reached out to her about dating Bob because you wanted to get some info to use against him. Playing the just curious guard is a complete joke. You were digging on info. For Wrong. Him. Prove Stop it. Being Prove it. I didn't even know anything was gonna happen at that point to Bob. That's just a lie. We call that a reach, my friend. If the nudes were leaked implying they were already public, how is that bad? She what? can just Google and see the same thing. She didn't know they that were leaked until Bob bad. brought it up. Regardless of who brought it up, you are missing the main point and intentionally ignoring it. Let's, let's play this one out, okay? Let's say that I host a show that regularly has girls come on. Let's say that somebody else is messaging me and I mention, Hey, did you know that girl X that comes on? Did you know that her nudes are public? Did you know that they're actually leaked? Like, what do you mean? Like, oh, well, they're already public. It's okay for him to, like, as a producer of the show. Now, if it was, like, two random friends talking, I could kind of say, like, oh, shit, did you know that X's nudes are leaked? Like, oh, yeah, sure, blah, blah, blah. But for a producer of the show to make another person that comes on that show aware that another person's nudes are leaked that comes on that show? That's a little fucked up. You gnome fuck! So was Bob like, was Bob getting paid to be producer or? Yes. Huh. Ooh, cash cow. Real time cope. NMC, five pounds. What a mess. <clears throat> Called Casey a worthless fuck, recorded without her permission, TOS, all he can do is criticize. She never defended him. Gabriel I'm waiting for him to show the proof. $5. Honestly, this shithead needs to be banned already. But he's some money. Your drama is the most delicious drama. Mass report, girls. Proof, mass report. TOS for harassing the queen of you Twitch. We reporting. that she wasn't in the call, and so you don't know why she's involved. Now you say, oh, I don't remember that she was and act innocent. Er, uh, just as slimy or more as Bob. This whole drama is a lot of projection you think we're too dumb to see. <clears throat> Two days ago, I make the claim that Casey Tron wasn't in the call because I don't remember her being in the call. And then somebody in chat points out that I had asked Casey a question. Now, honestly, I said, oh, well, fuck. Maybe she was in the call. Maybe I'm mean, sorry. I was on two hours of sleep every night. Okay, I misspoke. My bad. You can assume I'm lying, but I probably misspoke. I shouldn't have doubted my memory. Because when I went back and I looked at all of the call logs and everything, she wasn't in that call. There was a second, much smaller, much shorter call later that did not involve all of the original girls. Casey Tron was never in the original call. I shouldn't have doubted my memory there. I was absolutely correct. Okay, I'm just going to read the rest of these, sorry. Um, Zao's donated $20. This wasn't a manifesto. It was a public execution. Pickles Play Games donated $2. This is some serious John Tucker stuff, dude. What the fuck? D Kink donated two pounds. Or euros? No, pounds. Editor, there better be a video on the Bob Saga. X donated $60. Why do I need to be following for three months to chat? Good job. Opera Cat donated $5. Bob, I know you're watching this. I bet you $20 that the full three-hour call does not save you like you claim in your second stream, you dumb fuck. Yash donated $5. They hated him because he told the truth. Love you, Destiny. Dallas donated $5. Bob, no more job. Now he eats corn on the cob. Asexual but touches his throbbing knob. Casey trying to mix her is snob. He thought he could build an angry mob, but of his glory, he was a rob. Good, good one. Nice. Palsteron donated five dollars. I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, are mostly hung up about your blackmailish behavior and your first message about Bob and the unlucky case. Not taking any responsibility for it. Fuck the kids up. Was it fine response? I wasn't fucking blackmail. Okay, you, I'm not asking her for any information. I'm not trying to get her to do something she doesn't want to do. I literally just wanted to not message me. And I threatened to, to relist a video that had been listed publicly in the past. Okay, is it dick behavior? Yeah, sure. But we were fucking with each other, and she says just as much. I'm not blackmailing her for fucking information. I shouldn't have let Bob have the narrative on that. Um. <clears throat> um, Destiny flop five dollars. You're pushing forty. Acting like a ten year old. Please pick up. Pick a struggle. Floppany. Okay. Um, Mangerino donated one dollars. The Ophelia part. Asexual. More like asexual assault. Great tone. Can five dollars? Can we get back to league? All right.
Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.